Life's like the feeling when you had a point But forgot it Had a ticket for my train of thought But I lost it God gave me instructions On how to live my life But I couldn't read his handwriting So I burnt them last night but I take the beauty of chaos over ugly perfection I've woken up on the wrong side of the bed Every day since 1987 I can feel myself slipping away from any chance of redemption But that's okay cause if it's where Falwell goes then I don't even want any part of heaven a guy on TV offered to save my soul toll free But that would have required getting up off the couch So I was too lazy Instead I wait in the bushes outside of a cop's house Holding a 12 gauge God is it dead But I'll get that bastard someday and I take the beauty of my chaos over anyone else's perfection I've still woken up on the wrong side of the bed Every day since 1987 Nothing scares me as much as the fact that I don't give a shit for redemption But that's okay cause if it's where Limbaugh goes then I don't One, two, three, one, two, three. I was a loner until there were no friends left. And before someone offered me drugs, you know, I was straight edge. And everyone's quit till you offer them a cigarette. Before we learn our lesson, let's see how bad things can get. I'll drink myself to death, or at least I'll drink myself to sleep Chain smoke my way through the gaps in between My aspirations and my apathy As we drive past the last exit to home I am waving goodbye and I might be sleeping in the ditch tonight But it's alright Cause whiskey is my kind of lullaby I was sober all morning Till I woke up this afternoon And before someone offered me a job You know I was gonna get one soon And everyone in this town sleeps Till the calendar collides with June before the booze wears off, let's take another shot or two. And I'll drink myself to death, or at least I'll drink myself to sleep. Chain smoke my way through the gaps in between my aspirations and my apathy. As we 
drive past the last exit to home. I am waving goodbye and I might be sleeping in the ditch tonight, but it's all right. Cause whiskey is my kind of lullaby. Lullaby. One, two, three, four. Well, if I found God anywhere, it would be by the tracks. Face down in a boxcar, 40 in both hands. When I find God there, we'll just sit and roll some top. Cause no peak just as confused as anyone else on this rock. I took two taps of acid yesterday afternoon. Woke up this morning with a torn pair of shoes. Found I'd ruined my life and everyone else's too. I guess this is what my teachers warned me drugs would do. But they forgot to mention the way the morphine makes the pain go away. And how I'll always remember the good times in my spine and the holes I burn in my brain with this next line. If I found Satan anywhere, it wouldn't be by the tracks Trading souls of kids like me for cheap bags of snack When I find Satan there, you know I won't be thinking twice At least in hell, there's rock and roll, it ain't no Jesus Christ I swear I left my sanity someplace in this mess Crumpled between empty beers and packs of cigarettes Kick my last note to pieces and then just hope for the best I guess this is why my friends warned me against homelessness But they're the ones getting laid And I'm the one waking up lonely every single day And I'll remember that as I listen to their crap Tell them to fuck off, then hug them after that Well, if I found God anywhere, it would be by the tracks Huff and whip it down as he watches the trains pass When I find God there, I'll watch him pass out throwing up Cause he's drank himself to sleep every night Since the one that he made us I am definitely looking at treat tonight. Uh, fucking, it's working out. What can I? What? What can I? What can I do? Do I was working out. Oh, fucking I. I trimmed down the sides as well today. Um, here we go. I was just looking at this um, fucking headline. Um. Americans lost one billion dollars to romance scams in 2021. Uh, <laughs> thank you, I feel a lot better than I felt on Friday. Friday, I felt literally under the weather. Um, Friday and Saturday, I felt like I was coming down with something. Um, and then Sunday, it's sort of eased off. And then today, uh, yesterday and today, I, I'm good. Either way, yeah, a billion dollars to romance scams, which, by the way, for those of you who have heard Kai talk about con artistry, that's my line. Um, the, the sweetheart scams, I find wholly just abhorrent. A um, billion dollars. The FBI released a press release stating this. Jesus Christ. Wow. 
Wow. You know a woman who sent someone 2K? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, 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 I approve of a lot of different scams and... Um, Uh, I approve of a lot of different scams in card, con artistry. I don't, I don't mind it for the most part. But the sweetheart scams are—they hurt people. They legitimately hurt people. Um, yeah. What are you talking about, non-binary? You're from an imperialist core nation. Like, hey, Al. Hey, what the fuck are you on about, Nine Binary? Aren't you from like the Imperial Core? Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> when are we gonna get reparations from y'all? Uh, fucking scamming lonely, desperate people and technologically illiterate old people are where I draw the line. The technologically illiterate old people I kind of take as just like casualties of war in the development of technology, but the lonely, desperate people, that one bothers me. Um, you want to bet? You want to bet? I can show you numerous examples of sweetheart scams being so effective that cancer patients trade their uh, the money for their uh, cancer uh, that they would use to pay for their cancer treatment to their potential uh, sweetheart elsewhere. I can show you actual uh, ca uh, like metastasized cancer suffering deaths. Yeah, from sweetheart scams. There's a reason I find sweetheart scams wholly distasteful. They have they have a body count attached to them as well. And it's not as small as you might think. At a billion dollars strong? Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. Um This is this is this is again, this is the sort of shit I was talking about earlier on the fucking comments. Why do all of you leftists suck at having a conversation with like normal human beings? What is it with fucking leftists? <laughs> I can't any of y'all have a normal conversation. <laughs> fucking A. It is astounding some days how bad lefties are at actually conversing to like regular people. Uh, <laughs> uh, most people, Amorous are just trying to live their lives in a neoliberal hellscape. Um, most people are not actually conservative or liberal or progressive. Most people are trying to survive. That's, that's what most people are doing. Oh, did you hear me think about the people defrauded of their NFTs out loud? I need to be more quiet. Yeah, the NFTs, fair game. Fair game on the NFTs. That's in that category. Was there was there a shortage of people screaming about how NFTs are a fucking pyramid scheme? How it's a pump and dump fucking scheme? Yeah. No. NFTs are fair play. Um, you lose you lose your fucking uh, <clears throat> you, you lose half your fucking your um, your worth in one day because of the crypto market shit happens shit happens yeah exactly caboose most people are fairly apolitical like that's that's what most politically minded people don't y'all we live and breathe this shit right like this is a daily for us we live and breathe this shit but go out touch grass and talk to somebody who's not like politically involved who's not an activist most people are just trying to live a halfway decent life. Most people are trying to make sure their kids or their parents are taken care of. They're trying to make sure they don't get kicked out for fucking, you know, non-payment. Most people don't give a shit. Most people can't, they don't have enough time to deal with that. They don't have the energy. They don't have the spoons, if you speak that language, right? To deal with that sort of thing. 
Um, so it is, yeah, yeah. Hey, Rev. No, no, in fact, Rev, it wasn't, but it kind of is. It isn't, Rev, but it is. Like, it's it's the same conversation. Um, it's the same conversation all over again. What is it with fucking leftists being unable to carry a real conversation? Uh... Yeah, it, it was, I mean, I watched two different people walk into that conversation, Rev, and the first thing they do is basically tell the dude to shut up. That's the first words out of their mouth, basically. Yeah, I get it. The language choices that he was using, some people find detestable, some, some people find unacceptable. Well, you're castigating, you're attempting to castigate his vernacular as well. So, like, how is that a starting position for having a productive conversation? Is walking in and telling somebody to shut the fuck up. Right? It was just shocking to see in action what leftist praxis looks like for, the, for a large part of leftists. Is that, like, look, I won't talk to you. I won't even bother trying to change your mind until you shut the fuck up. Yeah, that's going to be a productive conversation. It was, it was weird. What's up, Puka? Yeah, Rev, I, 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 call, I had to call it out. I had to call it out. I had to call it out. Eh, Caboose, a conversation that was happening earlier today on the fucking Discord server between a few people. And I watched two people who, at least two people, I'm not going to name names. I watched two people who weren't even participating in the conversation at the time. Step in just long enough to tell one of the participants of the conversation to stop using certain language. They had nothing else to contribute to the conversation. They had no points to make. They had no furtherance of the conversation. It wasn't a matter of, uh, you know, oh, well, I would love to discuss this with you further, but, you know, personally for me, I find that language repugnant. And as it, just for me, could you, you know, refrain for the, the duration of the conversation? And I would love to discuss this with you. No, no, no. No, it was straight up. Stop fucking saying that. Peace out. The Rev. Yeah, exactly. Which wasn't particularly helpful. It was not helpful at all. It was like, how... Is this what leftist praxis looks like? Because no wonder we make no inroads with anyone. Two fucking, two separate people walked into a conversation not involving more than five people fucking literally just to say to one person in particular, shut the fuck up. And then just bailed. Took the first, took the first fucking exit off the highway. And I was like, how is this productive? How is this useful? How is this contributing to anything? Oh, it's not. You're just attempting to police language. Got it. Right? Like all you're attempting to do. And I say this turn of phrase because it is what it is. It's, it's an attempt to castigate working class vernacular. It's class warfare. The fact of the matter is, is that there is a class of people's language. Uh, there is a there is a class of people that speak a particular way that another class of people find particularly disturbing. And that class feels that they have the authority and power to dictate to the other class of people how they should be how they should speak in the middle of a conversation attempting to dissuade them of more toxic ideology, philosophical foundations, beliefs, etc., etc., etc. Right? Two separate people just fucking walk up and be like, shut the fuck up, and then walk out. Wow, thanks for contributing so much to the conversation. The dialectical exercise that we were engaging in, by all means, by all means, that dialectical exercise was lifted to, it was elevated to a new uh, form. The, it's evolved form definitely was achieved solely through your contributions. So generous contributions to, uh, to that conversation. <laughs> Rev bites the bullet. Language policing is fucking gay. Dude. <laughs> fucking gay. <laughs> oh, as a, as a man who has had plenty of dick in my ass in my day. What's up? What's up song? 
All right, as somebody who's had so much dick in me, right? It's fucking gay, <laughs> right? Take the, try and take the word from me, <laughs> right? Try and take the word from me. Fucking A. Yeah, I just, it, that annoyed the shit out of me. I was like, what, how is this productive? And then of course the responses I get were silence and then like, well, oh, I meant I was trying to meme. Which is essentially Zoomer speak for it's just a prank, bro. It's the same energy. It's the same fucking energy. It's I got called out and I don't know where to go from here. So I'm just going to pivot hard into bullshittery. I was thinking about this last night. I was thinking about this last night. Um, <laughs> Schrodinger's woke scold. I like that caboose. Um, I was thinking about this last night. This is, this is sort of apropos of, it's just a meme, bro. Um, if you're going to espouse anarchist ideology, anarchist philosophy, if you're going to be an anarchist, the left has been characterizing the problems of society as a cancer for ages now, right? Capitalism is a cancer, it's a growth, right? Capitalism is a unchecked growth. That's that's akin to cancerous cells, right? A cellular structure whose DNA has been uh, damaged beyond repair and doesn't shut down its replication process is blah, 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 blah. Um, fucking, do you really want to push me in the middle of a serious conversation where a guy's actually fucking on a roll? Do you really want to go there? Some fuckers need to learn to read the room sometimes. Leftists have been uh, um, using the analogy of cancer for things they don't like um, for quite some time. And I was thinking about this in the bathtub. Um, I don't think it's cancer. I think it's a hormone imbalance. I don't think the elements that we talk about, that we analyze, are cancerous. I think they're innate. I think these are elements of human philosophy, human psychology, human behavior, human development, sociological development, that are unbalanced and untuned or not optimized correctly. I think it's a more of a hormone imbalance. I think that if we start to look at this, it's a chemical imbalance. Yes, greed and egoism can run amok and cause all sorts of problems, but it can also be utilized for progressing and evolving society and benefiting those around you. It's a matter of understanding these tool sets. And it's to that regard, it's to that end that I was thinking that anarchists of of all of the political groups, of all of the politically minded people, we have to be the quickest on our feet. We have to be the ones because the conversations that we have to have are the, some of the most nuanced. And people aren't prepared for that a lot of times. The people who baby anarchists, they get tripped up very easily, and we all know this, but a proper anarchistic rhetorician is required to have an element of Machiavellianism and an element of dynamism in their orative skills to the extent of being able to lead somebody in one direction or another for the purposes of potentially manipulating the conversation, manipulating the, the timeline of events. And there's, there's examples of this that you could use as hard examples, but there's also like soft examples of in, you know, a hypothetical um, uh, uh, conversation with somebody, you could lead them into the sort of the Nazi territory. And it's like, okay, so what was the ethical problem with Nazism? What was the ethical problem? Why? What's wrong with killing all the Jews? Right? Like this is... This is a very tenuous area you have just entered and you need to be have your wits about you. 
but you also have to have the long game in mind the entire time because if you have this plotted correctly in your head, what you're attempting to do is lead somebody through an ethical framework and get them to fall into the pit trap that is, holy shit, you would have ended up being a Nazi. Like, do you understand? Your ethical framework is lacking and you would have aligned yourself with national socialistic values because you have no underpinnings, you have no rule or act utilitarianism, you have no fundamental ethical framework to fall back on and these sorts of things, which in the moment looks bad. It looks bad, but taken in its totality, that's the process, that's the dialectical exercise. And anarchists have to have these levels of conversation because example the truckers the truck convoys yeah you know what they're right they're right right nobody's nobody wants to bite that bullet they're right the government is attempting to mandate a physical a medical act amongst its people and they are using civil disobedience to dis display their displeasure with it. We disagree. We disagree. I see it as one of the few things that holds civilization together is the willingness to, you know, undertake such things as vaccination programs to make sure that I don't unintentionally kill my fucking elderly neighbor or my elderly parents, right? That's that's part of my ethical framework. That's part of my decision making. And I would hope that everybody could arrive to that position. But unfortunately, not everybody does. And that's where authoritarianism starts to enter the room and say, <clears throat> and they, you know, get their way. But that's the conversation. That's the kind of conversation anarchists have to be prepared to have is to understand the nuance contained within an ethical framework contained within actions and human behavior patterns that look at like not just condemning the fucking trucker convoys so it's funny to just to poke some fun at them the canadian style truck convoys um we have to understand this process and we have to be able to discuss it within a nuanced framework and the, the, the level of dynamism, the, the, the amount of projecting a conversation in your head and predictive dialogue trees that you have to build on the fly just in case they answer this way, this way, this way, or this way, and you might have to path alternately takes a lot of fucking work and it's a skill set that you have to refine and you have to build. And so when I see people attempting to have these conversations, uh, attempting to have these levels of conversation who clearly are not schooled or prepared for it, right? That, that they haven't educated themselves in the process. They haven't practiced the process. And they're going out and attempting to have conversations with people in these same manners. They do more damage than good. And I, I, I just, I, I was, I just, I was just ruminating. I was thinking. I was just dwelling on this process. Was I was like, while I was laying in the bathtub about how, out of all of the political groups, out of the entirety of the political political spectrum, as far as rhetorically driven dialectical exercises go, anarchists have to be the most prepared. And it doesn't mean you have to know the most material, though that helps. You have to be quick on your feet. If you can't create a conversation in your in your head on the fly, if you can't use various modalities of operation, Socratic, Platonic, even, I mean, even Hegelian or Kantian, right? It, the various methodologies of teasing out information and then seeing if you can build something new out of that. If, you, if you're not experienced and you don't understand these processes and understand how to have a functional conversation, because that's where this loops back to, by the way. It's not just about these high-minded, academic, ivory-towered philosophies or concepts that we talk about. It's also understanding how to speak like a normal human being to the every man, the every woman, the every person, right? That... And it loops back to the initi the initiator of this, where, yeah, you know what? Go down to the fucking docks. 
go hang out with some merchant marines. Go hang out with some army members. Go hang out with some fucking, like, actual, like, U.S. marines. Go hang out with some fishermen. Go hang out with some factory workers. Go hang out with some fucking agricultural labor, uh, agricultural laborers, right? People who are actually fucking working the land. Yeah, Axel, go touch grass. Uh, go hang out with some of these people. And then in the midst of that conversation, ex attempt to explain to them about how their labor is exploited. And when they say the dreaded R slur, they dr say the dreaded F slur, or they say the, they say the dreaded anything slur, or they say some something that's just problematic, right? And the conversation grinds to a halt because this dumb motherfucker doesn't know how to just let it go. Just let it go. Move on past it. It's not important in the middle of this conversation to address their linguistic choices. Their choice vernacular is not on trial at this moment. What you're attempting to do is gain inroads psychologically with this person so that you can potentially down the line expose them to more enlightening philosophies and schools of thought. Not chastise them and attempt to castigate that vernacular. It, this is this is a fundamental limitation of leftists as far as I can see. Is is in every fucking camp I've seen of leftists, this is a thing. This is a problem within progressivist leftist spaces. Is that we, and when I say we, I'm not including myself in this. When I say we, we don't know how to speak to people. We don't know how to have a conversation anymore. And there's, it's just, this is, this is some level of limitation that is worrying to me as far as a leftist, right? As somebody who wants to push a progressivist agenda, as somebody who would like to see us have some, you know, progress in my lifetime. I, that's that's not even I don't fucking okay so Svenska is Sweden I don't uh, leftists need a bit of cognitive behavioral therapy and not the CBT and not the the kinky time uh, kind I, I yeah this is this has been a thing for me for a while that like I can't understand how multiple people could enter a conversation with Nothing to contribute. Without, and, and the, the only thing that they contributed to it was don't talk like that. I, I, Look, I've talked about this before. I'll end up talking about it again sometime in the future. Sometime in the future. I I I, I sincerely believe that this is this is we're approaching this incorrectly. We're doing it wrong. Our our metaphors are wrong. Our our internal imagery of the problem is wrong. I, I think the, 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 the language that we're using in our own heads to relate to the problems is wrong, leading to incorrect solutions. I, I think there is a fundamental divorce. There's, there's a chasm of difference between what's occurring in leftist mind space versus reality. And that is leading to these continual, continual, continual failures. And as terrifying and disturbing as this is for me to admit and say to myself, I think the conservatives' mental projection of how to interact with reality is a more accurate model than ours. You know how fucked up their model is? It's more accurate than ours. And you know why? I will I will defend this position. 
an accurate model can predict and influence. The conservative model of political action accurately predicts movements within the political space and influences it to a large degree. Their model is more accurate than ours. Results speak louder than anything else. Do they get results? Anybody going to argue that? They put up fuck they put up scores on the board. What's up Viva? They put up fucking scores on the board, right? They score they win they win games. They score points, they win games. I think their model is more accurate than ours, and I think the score proves it. So, I think I think we need to have a good gut check. Yeah. Cupcake, yeah. Division, fear, hatred, yeah. And it works. It's accurate. Human beings work on that model. Human beings work on that model. I will not have you undermine what I'm saying at this point with fucking cat ears with her. Um, yeah, I, I, I truly believe leftists need a solid gut check with... We need to have a moment with ourselves and accept that we've been doing this wrong. It's not working. It's not working. We look at, look at what's going on in the U S. Um, Amherst. So, what about every engineering project that's ever wanted to do something new? You start with current existing technology. You work with the, uh, the physics of the realm. You work within the confines of what you know. And you build. And the next thing you know, within a decade, you're on the fucking moon. Right? Like, this is... I, I refuse... What's up, Astral? I refuse to accept that as, as an excuse. I don't even know what to fucking do with that. To be honest, fuck us for trying to protect Ukraine, not the Ukraine. It's Ukraine. Astral, I don't think they have better solutions. I think they're more effective at modeling, predicting, and influencing than we are. Right? Like, that's... And that's what we're attempting to do, right? We're just attempting... Let's face it. We're playing the same fucking game. We're just running the ball two different directions. And it seems we can't even get our hands on the fucking ball. And half the time, when somebody gets their hand on the fucking ball, we run up and fucking start insulting our own potential teammates, and they turn around and run the ball the other direction. Like, we, we end up absolutely shooting ourselves in the foot as leftists. I mean it in the strictest scientific sense. For Tuse, I mean model and predict. I mean being able to plot a series of points within a predictive model that represent variables and factors within human sociological uh, uh, spaces, human psycho uh, psychological spaces, human economic spaces, and general behavior patterns of the human animal, and then predict how they will react and utilize and benefit from those predictions. I mean model and predict the same way an ecologist means it. I mean it the exact same way. Being able to build a mathematical model of the world. Being able to step back and understand this. Con artists do this all the time. Con artists are masters at modeling and predicting human behavior. They understand. 
They give you a limited set. They put you into a corridor. They put you into a, a, an avenue. They understand. They block off the areas of escape that they don't want you to go down. They give you only two choices, and they uh, they lean you towards one. But they always give. You, uh, there's always another one there because it, it's like that. It's the same thing con artists do. It's the same thing magicians do. It's the same thing that fucking politicians do. It's the same thing that priests do, by the way. Model and predict. And then utilize those predictions to alter human behavior. Oh, is this it? This, 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 okay. Um, okay, so this person clearly, do I have to shift gears? Do I have to fucking Tokyo drift? I have to Tokyo Drift. I do. All right. Oh, come on. Let's at least have the conversation. For fuck's sake. Oh, for fuck's sake. <sighs> Jesus Christ. All right. Two things. I, I can't... I can only do one thing at a time. Um... Fertus. Fertus. That's exactly what the scientific process is too. How is that a disagreement? You test a variable. You see if it... You flip a switch. You see if it turns the light on or off. The light turns on. You build that into the model. Of course trial and error is an element within... How is... How is that a disagreement, Fertus? Trial and error is a fundamental element in building predictive models within scientific realms. Yeah, I'm like, uh, homie, like that's, okay, cool. Yeah, that's, that's, they've just got hundreds of years of it. Thousands, if you argue monarchy and shit like that. So, I mean, there's, that playbook is old now. All right, now, I wanted to have a conversation with Doofy McGee. Um, but like so much shit just fucking happened before I could even get to it. Y'all, y'all fucking like just dogpile. Um, oh, they're already gone. I guarantee it. These fuckers run as soon as you do that. Will Alexander, what's up, Will Alexander? My uncle Mulk has been M O L K. Um, has been talking to me about the Lurd. He says it is this bloke up in the sky who made everything. He recommended this book called The Bubble or something by Jay Sass. The guy was some flashy rocker bro a bloke with long hair and whatnot. But the lads back then didn't like him as he talked about how to manufacture a variety of ultra high density carbon fiber composites. Oh, Will Alexander, you are a weird fuck. I love you, man. I love you. Know that. Know that. Um, I don't... Okay. Now, we'll see if Doofy McGee is still here. They usually leave as soon as that happens. But if Doofy McGee is here, I will fucking Tokyo drift this bitch right into the Ukrainian conversation. Otherwise, we'll see what happens. Um... Fucking some now. What was the the thing? I get what you're saying, but we just can't accept everyone. Some people cause a lot of harm. We can't accept racists, for example, no matter how working class they are. How do you solve that? Checker, 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 checker. I'm not saying fucking get the clan member a clan member to marry your sister and invite him over for fucking Christmas dinner. I'm saying have the conversation for fuck's sake. If the person wants to shoot everybody in the room, we fucking deal with that. But the fact of the matter is, is that we're not even willing to have the conversation. Do you see what just happened? Leftists aren't even willing to have the conversation over half the time. No matter how annoying, how many times we've done it, fucking X, Y, Z. Take your fucking reason. We have completely shut down. We have we have a hundred percent res 
rescinded. We, we have just absolutely given entire spaces to the right wingers. You don't understand. You understand that, right? We gave them the labor, uh, the labor field, blue collar workers in North America, leftists just left. We just left. We just abandoned them. And then who else they got taken? They got taken advantage of the fucking right wingers, the alt writers, the fucking libertarians, right wing libertarians all fucking moved in. Look at the fucking bro spaces. Look at tech bros. Look at gym bros, right? All super libertarian, all very much like borderline and cap, all right wing libertarian. Where were the leftists? How, how did we, we completely walked out on those people. That's on us. That's on us. Um, yeah, rednecks, dude, rednecks, rednecks were there before us. Okay, the rednecks were there before us in many cases. You want fucking like the OG? We will fuck shit up in favor of in favor of labor movements. Them rednecks. Okay, they got shit done. All right, they weren't afraid. I I dude, leftists are afraid of the conversation now. All right. Now, your name is a little, little problematic. We'll admit that right out of the gate. Now, I refuse, I refuse to call you that. Um, but, um, I, Genghis, it's, it's uncomfortable when it happens. Right wingers do it too. Genghis, right wingers do it too. By no means. This is not unique to leftist spaces, but if we want to have an eye towards gaining those people back, if we want to, if we want to gain those spaces back, if we want the labor market, if we want the laborers to be on the side of labor, then we need to start having that conversation. We have to make the first move. We have to be open to it, right? It's on us. Yeah, Wither, because I unbanned him. Fucking like. <laughs> Fucking, yeah, it's fucking talking points. But, I mean, we have to be willing to have the conversation, people. It, like, that, that's on us. That's on us. We we have to be able to have that conversation. If we can't, if you can't, individually, if you can't, that's fine. I'm not telling people that you have to be willing to do it. I'm saying that the left in general has to be willing to do it. And if you're not capable of that, having that conversation without it going south on you very fast, then just opt out. Just ha know thyself and tag out and be like, oh shit, this one's not for me. I'm gonna fucking take this, um, I'm gonna take this personally, right? Like, yeah. So like, I, I yeah, but fucking, oh, leftists. Um, okay, Chewbacca, Chewbacca. I understand your, um, Um, I understand your position um, about, we'll call it NATO encroachment, the encircling, right? The encircling issue. Do you also understand that that's, are you willing to accept that that isn't the only reason Putin is doing this? That while it may be a factor somewhere in to one degree or another, scope and scale, set that aside, that there are other reasons as well. It, I, I understand that portion of your, your argument, but do you understand the demographical collapse within Russia that's occurring? Do you understand the need for a port, though they don't have one, they don't have a uh, port access? Do you understand the fact that Putin is facing the dictator's dilemma? Like, these, there's, there's other factors at play here as well. And I just want to see if you're willing to accept these within your model. Or is this solely NATO encroachment for you?
this is my issue. There's a there's a host of sociological factors that Russia is facing. One, primacy, the demographical collapse of Russia. Look into it. Demography is a brilliant way to analyze a nation state. Um, and Russia is facing a workers collapse. Essentially, the long and short of it is, is that one of the most successful things that the USSR did, credit where credit's due, was the uh, apprentice, uh, Apprenticeship Journeyman Master Program. Essentially, the USSR knew how to create, um, knew how to train, create, and maintain educated experts on fields of work, be it highway infrastructure, be it pipeline infrastructure, be it, you know, whatever. They're very good. They were very good at that. Um, as long as it wasn't super high tech like nuclear reactors, they tended to excel. Russia, the Russian Federation, ended that program and then reduced the age out uh, limit and forced all of their old masters into early retirement. This created a knowledge gap that is comp uh, that is compounded by a demographical collapse that Russia is facing. One, they don't understand how to maintain their own systems. Two, they don't have the people to maintain those systems. Three, they don't have a secured border because their border doesn't include access to shipping channels. So they're fucked either way. Since the dissolution of the USSR, they need access to the Black Sea. That's the truth of the matter. And they can only get it through a variety of manners. And here's the big one. Four. Four. Putin is facing the dictator's dilemma. Putin is not a good man. There's a lot of not good men in this world. There's a lot of not good humans in this world, right? But Putin is not a good man. I think we can accept that, right? He has stolen untold amounts of wealth from the, from the Russian Federation. He runs an oligarchy. He runs an oligarchy. He came up using bribery scams to make to uh enrich himself so others may access the port cities he was in charge of that that's how he came up he basically came up on a bribery scam he has been doing that ever since if you look at the heads of state heads of uh, state corporations heads of media enterprises heads of oil and gas like gazprom that sort of thing what you find is putin's allies the people benefiting the most financially from the rush the fleecing of the russian federal coffers are putin's allies and himself to the tune of untold amounts of wealth we're talking trillions probably he is facing the rut of the dictator's dilemma if he does not secure the position and secure his legacy he will end up like many, many dictators that came before him. So he has to do something to secure that. What is the number one way to manipulate a nation state and a populace? What's the best way? If you're in his position, saber rattling, saber rattling, war. The US knows this, the British know this, fucking Spain, Portugal, Belgium, everyone, China, everyone knows this. A war. A war rallies support at home. A war increases uh, increases approval numbers of its leader. A war is good for business. Putin knows this. He's no fool. So this, the Ukrainian situation is not as simple as NATO. There are a multitude of factors, most of which are actually in Putin's control. The NATO thing is not within his control, admittedly so. And that should be viewed as some level of threat at the nation state level for himself. That is a factor. Any, uh, any geopolitical analyst would count this in. 
but it's not the defining factor for this moment in time because most of the action is actually coming from Putin and it's not directed at the missile sites. It's not directed at where NATO is attempting to secure borders. It's directed at Ukraine. What's unique and different about Ukraine? All right. So I'll leave you I'll leave you there. I'll leave you there, Chewbacca. Let's just say there's more analysis that you would benefit from doing per this situation. And I I love that you you came up with an open mind there. Oh, Boris Johnson's also banking on it to save himself. Oh, Bojo. He's that foppish idiot. Fucking, I, oh, fucking Oxbridge. Because he's not as dumb as he looks. He plays dumb, but he's got, I don't trust that motherfucker. That Oxbridge education? Mm, yeah. Uh, Left? song nah we we don't want this one we got other shit to do it's it's not even it's not even in our uh, in our uh, our benefit uh the the china one is happening in the southeast sea not over on the landmass um that's 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 where the china front is it's actually in the southeast sea and you can see that based off of uh u.s marine um um purchasing requisitions for 2030 they are pivoting and repositioning themselves for a Southeast, uh, Southeast Asian uh, island hopping style expeditionary force armament rather than a desert based or land based armament. Their purchasing specs for, for 2030 d demonstrate this very clearly that they are shifting focus for China into the Southeast, uh, Southeast, uh, Southeast Pacific seas. And you can see that all the time. That's constantly a, a front for us um we don't really want to be involved and you can you can look at the biden administration rhetoric concerning the russian uh, ukrainian situation you could see how how many others usually if it was us we'd be like right there right we're we're like trying to get the coalition of the willing going we're trying to get the fucking we're rallying the troops that sort of thing like when it came to this one the u.s was like eh yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Lithuania is fucking dropping arms in, you know, right? Fucking the UK sending SAS officers over. Like everybody else in Europe was concerned with this one. The US was just sort of dragging their feet like, oh, God, we got other shit we want to do. This isn't one of them. We didn't want this one. We'll deal with it and we'll benefit from it. We'll, we'll find a way to profit from it if we have to. Don't get me wrong, like we'll we'll do it, but we're not the one driving this one. Putin's in the driver's seat for this one. He really is. Um Yeah. Yeah, Rev, yeah shit. Um, should have claimed a shitload of previously occupied lands for uh, islands for uh, the guano like we did, eh? Yeah, basically. I mean, China fucking built islands. They just fucking like gathered up a bunch of fucking gravel and sand from the from the bottom of the ocean. They're like, hey, look, it's an island. Chinese national uh, Chinese national space. Right. Like and it was like right off the coast of the Philippines, too. And the Philippines were like, uh, excuse us. You don't get to just build an island in our sovereign waters. <laughs> like that's not a thing you get to do. Like, you know, but that's what China's been up to in the South Pacific Sea. Because China's fucking locked in. Dude, China's locked in. If that ring turns against them and then they get real military support from the rest of the world, dude, China's fucking locked in. It's it's not good for them. So they're very twitchy about that space. Um, so yeah, that's 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 where the US is focused right now. That's and you can notice that by our carrier group movements, by our selling of armaments to Australia, by our, our backing up of the Japanese defense forces, by uh, the uh, sell, uh, sending of I think uh, uh, was it air aircraft to Taiwan. Our focus is Southeast Asia, South Pacific Seas, China, uh, China, uh, Cold War with China, um, uh, trade, uh, Cold Trade War sort of situation with China. Um, yeah, Russia is not our gig this time. It just isn't. But like I said, we'll find a way to profit from it. Like that's, that's we're very good at that.
<laughs> then never fear, never, never fear. The U.S. will pull that one out. Um, well, there's always the vod. There's always the a vod song slash left. Oh, um, yeah. So, um, is he, is he still here? He left. See, guys, guys, you notice how that worked? All right. Can I, can I take a moment? All right. Dude straight up said, you made me realize a lot. And then shortly thereafter, left. No points spent. Oh, okay. Left. Um, no points spent. No one timed out. Just... Maybe he did. I give him the benefit of the doubt. See, this is the difference. Y'all y'all get to not give the benefit of the doubt where I have to give the benefit of the doubt. Uh, in honor of uh, myself, I get to pick uh, Zippy's nail polish color. What do I like? Um, do you have anything in like a shimmery... Um, you know what? Kind of like a, sh a shimmery blue. Yeah, if it's, if the blue's got a twinge of purple, like just, just blue slightly leaning into purple, go for that. Viva, study showed that facts actually do change minds. Yes. I, 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 good on Zippy. Um, I, I, I'm telling you, like, Leftists, for the most part, leftists suck at this. And I spent a lot of fucking years learning how to be a rhetorician, learning how to be an orator. And sometimes you just got to have the conversation with people who you otherwise would find detestable. Right? I, co I constantly... Um, <laughs> Uh, I constantly hearken back to the psychologists that got sent to Nuremberg, right? Do you, do you think those psychologists were like, yay, I get to talk to a Nazi genocidal murderer, right? Like I get, today I get to go speak to a person who boiled kids alive. Yay! Those psychologists were gutted. They were disgusted with who they had to speak to. Trust me, they were disgusted on many accounts. But f they sucked it up. They shut the fuck up about their own opinions. And they asked the questions that needed asking. Right? They got the information that was necessary. And they had a, a, a weird conversation in many times that they're like, yeah, th what a lot of those psychologists found out, they weren't monsters. They weren't monsters. They what what most people expected was like some three-headed cerebus fucking fire breathing fucking soul eating monster. Exactly, Che, the banality of evil. It was apathy. It was banal. It was boring. It was rudimentary. It was bureaucratic. It was administrative. That's what they found out. They found out that the face of some of the most horrific deeds ever conducted by man in the modern era was done with a casual blaseness of just filing paperwork. But we wouldn't have known that if those psychologists didn't nut up didn't have the fucking intestinal fortitude to sit down and have that conversation. Did we welcome those people into our societies again with open arms? No. Did we encourage more people to be like them? No. 
We did anything but accept them. But n now we understand it. Now we can begin to have the conversation. And that way, people who are headed down that path, we might be able to head them off. Right? The idea is not to accept the curb stomping fucking racist jackass into your family. The idea is to plant a seed in the curb stomping racist head and then walk away and see if it sprouts. The idea is to see if you can't shift them. And in the most extreme cases, if they mean harm to others, if they mean harm to a space, and if they are irreconcilable and they refuse to have the conversation, then you punch the Nazi. But you always, always try and plant the seed first. Always try and plant the seed first. But if the seed doesn't sprout, we have other means. But to, to go to those means initially is to defeat the purpose. One, it makes you look bad in front of everybody else. Makes you look bad. And then, two, it's counterproductive. Because not everybody already is that person. Just because somebody has a fucking 88 in their name doesn't mean that they're, like, ready to wear the red armband and, like, be goose-stepping in the street on, like, you know, baby Jew skulls and shit like that, right? They're not all lost causes. Many of them are. But they're not all. And if we as a movement, if we as a people, if we as a collective refuse to acknowledge that minds can be changed, people can be redeemed, that you are not condemned for all eternity because of past acts, then we do not understand our own issue. We don't understand the concept of reparative and restorative justice. We don't understand the difference between us and Abrahamic religion. Because that's fucking what that is. You are condemned forever for the sins of your past. Sorry, what? I'm sorry. I'm a fan of Jesus up in this bitch. I think you can all be saved until otherwise proven. Right? Like, I think the default state for the progressive leftist mindset should be try and save them all. Understand pragmatically that's not an achievable goal, but you should be trying that at least. And occasionally you got to punch a Nazi. It is what it is. It is amorous. It's long. It takes a long fucking time. It takes a lot of fucking work. It takes a lot of missteps and two steps back and one step forward sort of situations. De-radicalizing somebody is not an easy process. But should we stop? Because it's difficult? Ugh. That doesn't sound very leftist. That is the one thing I can say about leftist movements. We've never shied away from it because it's difficult. Dude, everything leftist movements have ever done is difficult. <laughs> like that's, that's, that's where we flourish. If shit got easy for us all of a sudden, we'd all be confused. We'd all be confused. <laughs> we would, we would be suspicious and untrusting and confused and just not right. Nothing would be right for us. We'd be like, wait, what, why, how did that work that easily? Right. But like, yeah, like we can't, we can't stop just because it's difficult. That's, that's not the leftist way for sure. Uh, an ex-Nazi would have a good bit of specialization to creating more ex-Nazis. Yep. Also the best editor of former radicals. Yep. Recruit them. Um, 
I, I agree. I think nonsense, it's 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 that sort of thing, and then you just sort of move on and then circle back. I think you circle back. I don't think I, I think some you just sort of look, this is a very personal process, and it's very um de- de- dependent on the person who's doing it as well as the person who you're attempting to do it to. Um, yeah, I, I think that circling back from time to time though, just to check, did the seed take root? If it took root, water it. If it needs some water, throw it some water. If it needs some fertilizer, throw some fertilizer on that bitch, right? And then keep on moving. Right? Like it, there's, I think the analogy carries. There's plenty of rain and fertilizer loose in the world. There's nutrients in the soil. It will rain from time to time and that will help water that seed. It doesn't, you don't need to dote on it. What? If you happen to be in the area and you walk by and the the ground is parched, can't hurt to throw a little water on it. I would love to have a conversation with that dude. Che, do you know happen to know that guy's name? Who is that? Che, I would love to know who that person is. I'd love to have a conversation with that person. Oh. I see people believe in... Oh, yeah, no. Fuck that. Fuck that. Amorous. Yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah, that's fucking the truth doesn't. This is where I talk about what, why I talk about what the leftists need to understand and be more Machiavellian. They don't fucking just because the righteousness is on your side doesn't mean shit for shit. You got to get the job done. You're, you're trying to convince someone of something. You're trying to undermine part of their worldview. You're trying to change like fundamentals within their psyche. Fucking just having the truth isn't good enough. You have to be manipulative about it the truth um i hate to say it but i think leftist permissiveness and general acceptance of others can be detrimental to its movement not saying we shouldn't uh, be nor should we ever be but i think we need to be aware that filling our space with societal rejects that couldn't fun should make us look like such all rejects <laughs> 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 of course you're right, Caboose. Of course you're right. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a harsh truth for leftist Caboose. That's a harsh truth. It's a harsh truth. Uh, <laughs> that's a rough one dude that's i love that you bit that bullet though i respect it uh fucking if you don't want to change people's mind you can watch a debate to be <laughs> yeah it's, exactly amorous uh, zippy why gotta come for me like that <laughs> Oh, Caboose learned the lesson from the furries. Oh, let's see. Stereophonic Boots won. No, you are totally off base here. Cereal is a soup, you lib cuck. Um, no, I'm okay with that. Cereal is a soup. I'm fine with that. Uh, can't remember. I only know him as he's the one that's had loads of media appearances for being a successfully de-radicalized ex-Nazi. It really annoys me that he's on any left winger as bad as a Nazi rhetoric. Che or anyone else, if anybody finds whoever Che is talking about, some ex-Nazi that fucking goes around on the talk show circuit talking about how Democrats are as bad as like Nazis, give me his name. I'd love to look more in, uh, look into this dude more. That That's fascinating. But most cereal is cold. Does that mean it's gazpacho? Yes. Uh, cr- okay, Christian Piccolini. Uh, Piccolini. Yeah, Christian Piccolini. Um, yeah, I'd love to fucking... Who is this dude? I'd love to hear his argument. Oh, he was cash. Holy shit. Uh, um, um, Chicago area skinheads. 
Holy shit, he was the fucking leader in cash at 16. Holy shit. He did some shit. He did some shit. He did some shit. He did some shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Illinois Nazis. Nonsense. <laughs> fucking Illinois Nazis, man. Like, this is this some, some fucking shit. He was a fucking leader in cash at 16. Holy fuck, man. I... <laughs> Homie did some shit. <laughs> uh... Interesting. Oh, I bet he tried to derad me as an anarchist. Oh, I bet he tried and derad me. That'd be hilarious. Oh, critical of that. I don't see any. Okay, so I'm going to go. I don't see anything for his. I don't see him fucking hitting the Democrats, man. I'm looking here. I mean, he's hit fucking Sam Harris. He's hit Jordan Peterson. He's hit Richard Spencer. He's hit fucking Donald Trump. I can't see him. I don't find any of him hitting the Democrats. Interesting. Either way. Hmm. I think I've seen the TED Talk. I think I've seen the TED Talk. The more I read about this dude, the more I find I, I, he seems vaguely familiar. Um. <sighs> Gazpacho police, make sure that your bowl of alphabets is spelled correctly. Exactly. It may be that, Cricks. It may be that. Wolverines! It's one of the weirdest pivots in propaganda in my life. This is one of the weirdest pivots. Yeah. Anyway, um, sort of all I got in the tank, really. It's sort of all I got in the tank. I, I, you know, rant over, right? Leftists get your shit together. Stop being so fucking closed minded and gatekeepy and vanguardistic. And if you can't, if you don't have it in you, if you don't have the spoons, don't engage. Don't engage. Leave that for somebody else. I I, I think also, I, I fucking how many times do I have to say this? Leftists, go back to the spaces you abandoned. What is it? That just drives me up a wall that we completely walked away from the labor movement. We walked away from it. Now we're trying to recapture it, but we walked away from it. We, we walked away from the labor movement. We walked away from self-improvement and self-empowerment and individualism. We walked away from all, I mean, just a whole host of spaces and ideologies and philosophies and methods and manners of operation. Like, it just, god damn it, that pisses me off. That one bothers me. I'm working on the Jim Bro side. I'm working on the gym bro side. Dude, that's that's the long term on that one. I'm hoping I can get some of those gym bros. I'm going to, like, one of these days when I outgrow uh, my my home routine, I'm going to have to go to a, a weightlifter's gym. And, dude, that is libertarian central. That's what that place, though, dude, weightlifter's gyms are fucking libertarian central. Also, slash and cap. 
Those guys, why wouldn't they believe it? Why wouldn't they believe it? They're the definition of lifting yourself up by your bootstraps sort of shit, shit. They have to do it themselves. They have to put in the work themselves. No one else can lift those weights for them but them. They, of course, they think that way. They were ripe for fucking harvesting. They, of course, the fucking libertarians got to them. It was only a matter of time. But, like, I mean, fucking, look at the Marxist symbolism. Fucking hammer and sickle. What do you think that's indicative of? It's people who build shit and are physically active for a living and fucking harvest crops. That's what that shit's about. It's about the people who do stuff. It's about the people who build this world, right? Those two, look at that symbology. Yeah, less boring theory, more praxis. <sighs> Laziness is a virtue. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree with you on a fundamental level. George Carlin, you show me a lazy cocksucker who's sitting around playing with his prick all day, uh, watching TV, and I'll show you somebody who's not causing any problems. Right? I get it. But apathy is a weakness. I think is, I don't know. I'm hugely driven by willpower. Always have been. Oh, yeah, no. That person doesn't even occupy space in my head. Caboose sometimes causing problems is how you get stuff done. Uh, it's how you get stuff done. It's not sometimes, it's always. Honestly. Never, never has a people ever, never has the oppressed ever won their freedom from their oppressor by appealing to the morals of their oppressor. That's not how shit works. That's not how shit works. It's never worked that way. That's just, just, just functionally, historically, contemporarily, that's not how that works. So... Here's to the rabble rousers. Here's to the problem children. Here's to the ones who aren't afraid to speak their minds. So what would I say to the Canadian truckers? I would say, I understand. I understand. I get it. I get it. What you don't understand is science and medicine. I understand. You know what? Government mandates are a problem. Government overreach is a problem. And you know what? Your right to civic di civil disobedience is intrinsic. I 100% understand. But what you're, the thread that you're pulling at is the thread that binds the very fabric of civilization together at this point. So be careful. Also, I would uh, I would say, uh, can no one mention anarchists? Because nobody involved in the trucker protests are anarchists. They're not anarchists. The media is calling them anarchists. The truckers have taken some of this rhetoric as well. These fuckers aren't anarchists. That's just across the board. Can we just get that word out of everybody's mouth? For people who understand what that word actually means, please and thank you. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, what do you what do you mean? What do I mean by that? Um, by the thread, they're pulling at a thread that binds civilization together in the modern era. Um, I'm the son of a nurse, a lifelong nurse. I grew up in hospitals. I come from a medical family as well as a legal family. Um, I believe greatly in vaccination programs. I like not having smallpox. I like not having polio, right? I like not having childhood measles, mumps, or rubella, right? I, I, I like all of that. That's one of the benefits of modern society. And the thread that they're tugging at, you can see examples of what that looks like down the road in Georgia because Georgia is now attempting to pass legislation that would ban all childhood vaccines as well as rabies vaccines for dogs even. I do. I do. 
Yes, given given the long term neurological con, uh, conditions and the vascular conditions that are associated with COVID infection, yeah, I think there's an untold cost. It is true, Amaris. No, it is true. It is true. It's it's a Georgia bill that's being kicked around right now. Sorry, homie. Yeah, it's a thing. Um, I think the cost of COVID is going to be quite high. Both in lives, both in su- human suffering, um, but also economic long term. I think that the issue is far greater in scope and scale than many want to accept or admit to themselves. Also, um, like I said, I understand. See, my issue is that they should want to they should want to prevent this. They should want to get the vaccine. They should want to prevent this. But they are so hyper individualized within the Western society. If you want to see more on studies on this, see the Corsini Encyclopedia of Psychology, Volume 2, page 811 is where the meta analyses on a global scale start for individualism and uh, individualism versus collectivism and circles of empathetic response uh, in an individual. That's where you can start your research. Um, they are so inundated and propagandized by a hyper individualized society that they are willing to forego minor inconveniences or minor uh, or uh, individual sacrifices um, to the detriment of the the larger group and the larger group being the species frankly when dealing with pandemics yeah it's one of those things it's 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 an issue um, you believe in freedom of choice, AKA your body, your choice. Oh, uh, wait, who's, what's Amaris? <laughs> ah, yes. Um, yeah, I do. I also believe in sacrifice for the collective good. Crazy, huh? I, 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 I have elements of individualist and collectivist in me and they're balanced it's near as best I can. Where do I draw the line? <sighs> Somewhere past vaccine. Yeah. Somewhere past vaccine. So, I mean, the majority of the people protesting don't even understand what this vaccine is. They don't. They're incapable, by the way. They don't have the foundational education required to understand it. They're subject to fear and propagandized hate. They don't understand what it is they can't any facebook post will absolutely convince these people of one thing or another they have no scientific literacy when it comes to this and please do not come at me with dr robert malone we have debunked him so many times i just get tired of doing it they don't can okay i'll prove it quick like a bunny What does RNA stand for? What does mRNA stand for? What does mRNA do? What is the function of RNA? Please tell me, demonstrate, quick like a bunny, no searching, no Google searching, no Google searching. What does mRNA stand for? What does it do? I will take a casual common man's uh, demonstration of what this is. I'm telling you, the majority of people don't actually know. They're incapable of understanding this. Hey, pivot. There it is. Had to happen eventually. Had to happen eventually. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, it's okay. Oh yeah, it's hundred percent pivot. Yeah, yeah. Again, that is the definition of one. Oh. So, is what it is. <laughs> Caboose. I've been speculating on your statement about Sterner, how we need a drop of him in leftist ideology. I've always wondered if this is what you meant by that. We're a collective, but the individual should not be sacrificed in the name of collective. Caboose, no, you're spot on. You're spot on. I, I think Sterner is like bleach. Oh, well, I mean, clearly that's correct. Shrek lover. 100%. 100%. Shrek lover, you are, yes, yes, a thousand times yes. Um, yeah, Caboose, yeah. Sterner is the equivalent of bleach in the water, right? You should not be drinking bleach water, but if you have contaminated water and you need to disinfect it, a drop in a bucket will do the job. That's my view on Sterner. You need him. You need that idea. But you don't need too much of it. Because too much of it will kill us. It will kill us all. Yeah. I truly believe that. I, I, I would never turn my back on Sterner. But I would never advocate for being Sterner. Sternerist. That's 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 a that's a recipe for just a nightmare society. <laughs> He's a fucking sociopath. Like the guy is a card carrying nut job who truly believed might makes right. I, I, I can't abide by what um, Sterner would advocate for, for a primacy within a sociological group. But we need to be reminded of that in collectivist spaces because otherwise you end up with, you know, for the good of the, the you know, all, and you just sacrifice the individual a la Kronstadt, a la USSR, a la Mao, a la fucking Pol Pot, a la take your fucking pick. Right? Like, if you sacrifice the individual on the altar of collectivism, then you've missed the point of anarchism for the greater good. Um, you've missed the point of anarchism entirely. Anarchism is a collective, collectivist ideology built off of the individual nodes. If you ignore the individual, then you've ignored the anarchistic foundations. It's because of the empowerment. It's because of the individual autonomy that strengthens the network, that strengthens the collective. That's what builds the collective, is a group of inter-associated nodes. If you ignore that, then what's the fucking point? You're just a fucking Leninist at that point. <clears throat> so, yeah. Caboose, you're learning. You're getting it. Um, and plagued by society. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for the follow, my man. Um, I think everybody should read uh, <laughs> Leninist. Where? Um, fucking, I think everybody should read uh, The Ego on Its Own. And keep in mind, The Ego on Its Own, the first half is just an old man like screaming with a clenched fist at the church. That's fundamentally what, what the first half of Sterner's primary, primary book is. Um, the ego and so on is about literally the first half is just Sterner fucking old manning the church just ah! um, but the second half is definitely where like what should people not read nothing I think people should read everything um, I've read most of the objectionable content in my life if I'm going to have a conversation with a neo-Nazi, I most assuredly need to understand the foundational tenets of national socialism, which, by the way, isn't socialism. If you read the foundational texts involved in the creation and fomentation of national socialism, you quickly learn there's nothing socialistic about it. Um, so, yeah, like it's, uh, but yeah, no, read everything but just do it with a critical eye I I Jesus Christ what the I don't even wait Jesus Christ man we don't fucking um if I could read Eldrick text would I yeah for sure um yeah 
Neo-Nazi and Antifa. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, the, the, the Neo-Nazi took me a second. I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? Um, now, what was the actual question? What's the difference between Neo-Nazis and Antifa? Holy shit, man. You're in deep. You're in deep, homie. You're in deep. Um, okay, let's start. Are they polar opposites? Um, <laughs> yeah, it says fucking Jay. That was mine. That was mine. I was like, wait, the N word's more than fucking, how do we, okay. I suppose we could drop a G. We could drop the ER, go for the A. Like, yeah, I was starting to fucking like work with it. <sighs> um, anyway, how are they different? Well, let's start with their foundations. What are the foundations of Nazism? right-wing radicalism based on hyper-nationalism and racial supremacy, right? Conservative economics, definitely, like you could argue Austrian in style. What is Antifa? The Antifascista movement is born of wartime. It is born of oppression. It is born of a moment in time when fascists, actual fascists, um, started taking over spaces in which more libertarianly minded individuals, and I use that as in classical libertarianism, more libertarian and uh, libertarianly minded individuals, um, became the oppressed groups. So the anti-fascista movement began as a rebellion or a pushback and eventually evolved into full-scale guerrilla warfare and rebel operations throughout the European theater against fascistic and authoritarian elements. So, foundationally, these are two very distinct groups. These are, these are groups on the opposite sides of the line, for sure. They did battle with one another. Um, who is Antifa? They will inevitably um, start off as the World War II fighters. Um, there is specifically a um, crew that is defined as the original Antifa. But the truth of the matter is that... Um, What quickly became the definition or the inclusive definition of anti-fascist was anyone who fought against fascists. And the terminology of fascist quickly left the prescriptive space of political science and became a <sighs> analogous to authoritarian. So... Wait, what's... Okay, hang on. Uh, wait, is that... Wait, did he quote it? Wait, what? Who said future Nazis will call themselves... Oh, God, you literally... You fell for the fake quote, huh? Who did it? It was Greg Abbott. Oh, Jesus. And with some simple research... What you find is it was a Presbyterian minister and a socialist. Who said that? So to answer your question, I don't fuck. I can. I don't even know how to say your fucking name. Uh, to answer your question, Norman Thomas said that. 
or a, di a variation upon it for which it has been reductively transcribed to that version that Greg Abbott and the likes of yourself believe to be Winston Churchill. Do you know who Norman Thomas is? Seeing as you're quoting him and asking me as to the um, <clears throat> nature uh, or the origin of said quote. So do you wish to discuss Norman Thomas? Should we change to theology? No, Che, he's long been dead. He was born in 1884. He's a fucking North American Presbyterian minister who is a member of the Socialist Party of America. He, uh, no, <laughs> he, he ran, he ran for president six times and failed all six times. Yeah. He's, he was a failed politician. That's, that's who that is. He, he got, he got, um, basically battered about the body and head, uh, politically speaking every single time he poked his head up above the, the fray. Um, and so, yeah, um, <laughs> um, he, uh, <clears throat> no, no, quite distinct because when he supported the, uh, cooperative Commonwealth Federation who, uh, actively involved and integrated people from the Rand school of social science, um, yeah. Definitely different. Definitely different. Do you know the difference between Austrian and say Swiss or Chicago schools of economics? Because that's what we're uh, that's the kind of distinction we're talking now. Um, yes, he 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 hung out with the communists. He hung out with the Trotskyists. He hung out with the uh, Lovestoninites. He hung out with the Randians. He hung out with, um, yeah, a variety of individuals that we would otherwise these days lambast. Do you, do you know what school of economics Milton Friedman belongs to? Because you, you could, he, you say he's, he's the most valuable player, but can you tell me anything about Freeman? Do you not know? Why, why the question mark? Do you, do you have a declarative statement or do you have a question? No, no, you're, you're correct, but it doesn't seem that you, you're sure of yourself. So I'm going to follow that up with, what is the Chicago School of Economics? And what makes it good? No, homie, we don't play that game. We don't play that game, homie. Sorry. You're the one making declarative statements about Mil Milton Friedman being the most valuable player as an economist. So please, what led to your opinion of that? Why is Milton Friedman the most, uh, why is Milton Friedman the MVP? Why is, what is it about? I like what he says about inflation. What does he say about inflation? I mean, at least he's not an Austrian. I'm fine with that. About money printing and spending. Swede would be in pain right now. What does he say about any of these? You, you, you've, you've clearly, you have opinions about the neoclassical school of economics and especially the freshwater school, seeing as you're a devotee of Friedman, but what, what is it about this? What are the ramifications of these? What does he specifically say? And what is it that he, what are, what is he bad back it up with that is so convincing for you? I'm not terribly surprised. Um, 
No, no, Che. Friedman is most surely uh, freshwater. Um, he's he's Chicago. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's no getting around that. He's he is a affirmative uh, supporter of neoclassical economics. So. Yeah, he's he's the definition of a neolib. He is he Friedman basically led us to late stage capitalism. Friedman, this is the hilarity of it, right? Friedman is what Marx predicted. I'm not kidding you. It is it, it is uncanny to see what Friedman advocates for and where it ends up with neo uh, neoliberal capitalism and what Marx predicts for end stage capitalism. It's it is uncanny to read the two sort of back to back or inter interleaved with one another. You 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 quickly you're like this motherfucker is talking about this motherfucker and he didn't even know he existed, right? Like this fucker was born in 1912. Right? Like Friedman was born in 1912. Like Marx was not writing about Friedman. Marx predicted Friedman. It's weird. Viva, yeah, neoliberal economics. It's uh, neoliberal capitalism, uh, otherwise. But yes, it is. He, um, Friedman, was the economic advisor to Re Ronald Reagan. If anybody else needs in like needs details of how absolutely incorrect Friedman was about basically everything, um, yes, he was um, um, an advisor to Reagan and Thatcher both. By the way, um, Maggie Thatcher. Friedman's Friedman was one of her her advisors as well. Um, the the espousal of the virtues of the free market and the trickle up econ, uh, uh, trickle down economics. Friedman, that's Friedman. All of that sort of stuff. Yep. It, it, it's 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 a fascinating thing. He um, there was a couple of things. That he advocated for that we could we could we could say were good things uh drug policy liberalization um f uh, voluntary militaries that sort of that sort of thing like ag ag agreed oh yeah pinochet was hugely influenced by that pinochet was definitely like it, it's arguable that that was the birth of like what we come to understand as neoliberalism yeah yeah it's 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 <sighs> privatization, deregulation, laissez-faire capitalism, trickle-down economics, the market as a virtue, all of these things. This is all Friedman. This is this is why I find it fascinating that he he considers Friedman to be the MVP, given that we now, in hindsight, can look back upon the most influential administrations that Friedman had a hand in and see exactly how poorly they handled the economy. Bless your heart, Pookie. Bless your heart, Pookie. <laughs> oh. How did Nixon fuck up? This is this is just oh with the gold standard oh the gold standard I swear hold on I just heard Swede scream in his sleep somewhere ah oh, the gold standard oh. How's, yeah, how's that trickle down working for you? How's the deregulation and privatization of the house healthcare systems working for you? And, and he said, fucking uh, Dane Kestis. Hey, Dane, what country do you live in? What country do you live in? <laughs> Glass what? Steel who? Oh. Uh, Europe. Interesting. 
So you live in a deregulated, privatized healthcare system? Scotland. Ooh, interesting. Amorous, you work with what you get. And why is it bad for us? What what's what's the what's the intrinsic what's the linchpin? How is it bad? Why is it bad? What what series of events led to this? Interesting. So do you understand where US healthcare went wrong? Do you do you, do you understand US healthcare system? Oh, our debt is not an issue. If you think our debt is an issue, then you don't understand how the US economy works. Um yeah, that's not an issue for us. No, no economist would even argue that. I can get you an economist and a finance expert, straight up, that operates billions of dollars of private equity um, and handles risk management for them. I can get you one and give you a schooling that you will remember. That's not an issue. So what's wrong with our healthcare system? What, what, where, where is it? How's our healthcare system broken? Is this, what am I on? I'm near the end. All right. Wait a uh. Hey, Jill. No, no, you have opinions as a Scots, a Lithuanian living in Scotland about U.S. economics, born of a uh, U.S. economist um, who is one of the most detrimental individuals to uh, the globe. So I would love, uh, no, but my people do. Homie, I don't have to look up shit. Were you not paying attention to chat? It was literally in chat. It went right by. So, wh what's wrong with our healthcare system? Please, elaborate. Oh no, because where you're from and your, your experiential data matters to this conversation. I'm an American. I grew up in America. I've traveled abroad, but... I understand this system. I'm schooled in this system and I'm educated to a decent degree in this system. So I, I would love to understand your analysis of our system and how you came to your conclusions as someone who's living abroad, looking inwardly and advocating for more of this, more deregulation, more privatization. Do you want to come on the air and have this conversation? Uh, I waited 12 months to see a neuromuscular specialist, Dane. The cues are fine. Okay, so broken. Uh, do you know why those cues are so long? Uh, psychologist? I think that's supposed to mean do you want to come on the air and just have this conversation okay well then you will be at the disadvantage of being in text that's how this is going to work so let me explain to you the deregulation and privatization of the american healthcare system we used to have one of the most efficient world-class healthcare systems that anyone ever knew. The boomers grew up with it. In fact, prior to the Nixon administration, the U.S. healthcare system was largely a non-profit, not-for-profit system. Due to, uh, or, uh, due to the, what would become the Kaiser Permanente Medical uh, Group, but also now just at that time, the Kaiser 
medical group. In coordination with the Nixon administration, launched the first health man management organization or HMO, and they began the privatization, deregulation, and profitization of the American healthcare system, of which had never occurred before. So under the Nixon administration, we shifted and pivoted the nature of our healthcare system from one of a not-for-profit, fairly well-regulated system to one that was deregulated, privatized, and handled by massive corporations. Well, let's see how that ran deep. Let's see, what did that do? Let's see, let's track that over multiple generations. Well, I can tell you for a fact, healthcare, healthcare outcomes in the US are some of the worst in the, in the developed world, and we pay twice as much for it. We pay more for less. We die of preventable illnesses, such as, uh, so, such as diabetes type A on the regular, Texas has a uh, has a uh, maternal and infant mortality rate for birthing that rivals the uh, the underdeveloped world, aka the third world. We have one of the worst healthcare systems in the developed world. It doesn't matter which group you listen to, be it the Mayo Clinic, be it Stanford Health, be it Harvard Health be it the UN Commission on Health, whether you listen to a variety of studies, academic, privatized, even the Koch brothers, even the Koch brothers, the Koch brothers, the infamous libertarian brothers said they funded a study before the other brother died. They funded a fucking study that showed that in fact, by using single payer universal health care, the United States could save approximately $12 trillion over 10 years and return better results in health care outcomes. So when even the right wing libertarians like the Koch brothers are saying that you have, yeah, thanks Radhom, uh, are saying that you, um, saying that you can improve your healthcare outcomes and decrease your costs, maybe it's time to reevaluate re your economic foundations, such as Milton Friedman being the MVP of economists. Maybe the neoliberal capitalist model that you are espousing is fundamentally, uh, fundamentally and intrinsically problematic to the survival of humanity as a whole. Maybe the deregulation uh, uh, deregulation and privatization of the commons is not a great idea, especially not when we're talking about health care, especially coming from somebody who benefits from socialized health care. Hey, Rad. Oh, this isn't even close to a rant. You should have been here for the beginning of the stream. I did an hour long fucking taking lefties to task because we abandoned spaces that we shouldn't have rant. That went quite well, actually. <clears throat> but right now we have somebody who is advocating um, from Europe for a Friedman esque style of a, uh, a, a, a Friedman esque style of economics that would include more neoliberal capitalism, more deregulation, -re more privatization. For those of you that don't speak, fucking political nerd. Um, Milton Friedman was a uh, Nobel Prize winning, admittedly, Nobel Prize winning uh, economist of the uh, freshwater variety. If you speak economist, he's a freshwater. He was of the Chicago School of Economics and a, uh, a proponent, a huge proponent of uh, neoliberal capitalism to the tune of, if you want to know some of his credentials, he was the economic policy advisor for a couple of administrations some of you may be familiar with, um, Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher. Yes, if you were wondering where Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan got their it, um, got their economic advice, it was Milton Friedman, who, you know, yes, it's been pointed out numerous times at this point that um, <clears throat> one of the fans 
of um, of Friedman was um, Pinochet, um, where it is arguable true neoliberalism was born. Um, so, yes, he did fail upward into that one too, Viva. Friedman did a lot of failing upward, uh, upwardly. Um, yes, and Dane, some Scandinavian countries pay half salaries in taxes. And those same Scandinavian countries have the highest human index and happiness index indices in the world. Those Scandinavian countries you're referencing offhand are some of the best places to live on the entirety of the planet. So how is this a defense of that position? Because we have no oil to fall back on whatsoever or natural gas or military industrial complex or does the US not have money? Are we broke? Do you understand how leveraged debt works? I, it, of course not. Never mind. Why do I ask such questions? Uh, richest country in the world. 100%. By every metric. Richest country in the world. But we can't do it. Because apparently the Scandinavian countries have more clout than the US. That's a new one on me. I wasn't aware. But... Fair enough. Hey, <laughs> Yogi. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Yeah, um, actually, it depends who you're talking about. And we're all in the same sort of league, as it were. Do you know the list, Dane? Do you happen to know who is the top of the list of per capita GDP in the world? Any idea? They're essentially a Panamanian um, uh, corporate uh, 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 shell, uh, as it were, as a nation. Che is correct. It is Luxembourg which any European will understand how insane Luxembourg is. It is fundamentally a Panamanian building with a, like 10,000 corporations in it. Luxembourg operates as a shell company. Che, always the fucking Luxembourgians. Um, it is Luxembourg, ah, a sub for the most entertaining sub on Twitch. Ah, thank you, thank you, Rad. Um, not, but not for much longer, really, because the per capita GDP of Luxembourg last counted was 116,921. Ireland is the second runner up at 85,206. So how is that go gap going to be closing, Dane? I would love to know your economic insights into this. Switzerland is shortly behind them. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Luxembourg, Switzerland, Ireland, Norway, US. That's the top five. It's Luxembourg, Switzerland, Ireland, Norway, the US. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's, let's try and find your small little island. Oh, wait, you're Lithuanian by birth. Let's try and find Lithuania. You rank 45th. Lithuania ranks, ranks 45th. Uh, let's see. Um, let's find... Let's find the United Kingdom. 22nd. And yet socialized healthcare exists. So in the 22nd highest per capita GDP on a global scale, the UK... They managed to have socialized medicine for a time, of course, before the Tories begin to completely privatize everything and dismantle the NHS. I have fun, by the way, if you reside in the UK. Uh, you will absolutely love US-style healthcare system. It's brilliant. 
Um, there's nothing like, uh, there's nothing quite like dying of preventable illnesses. Germany 17, Viva. Germany 17. Catalina Gearbox. So maybe profits aren't the most important thing in the world. What a concept. Redefining growth and happiness and what it means to succeed for ourselves. What That's that's weird. I don't, Catalina, that's, I'm sorry, as an American, that's a completely foreign concept to me. If you didn't achieve financial growth in the next quarter, how do you know you're doing good as a person? Um, Snarky, thank you for the follow. For Lauren, thank you for the follow. Catalina, thank you for the follow. Reptilian, thank you for the follow. And Rad, of course, thank you for the sub and the, uh, and the raid. Um, yes, so, again, I, I, I fail to understand how nation states such as Germany, who's 17th on the list of per capita, um, per capita uh, GDP, is somehow pulling off socialized medicine that shames the American healthcare system's results. Even though we pay twice as much, we're arguably almost twice as rich based on per capita GDP. Um, how, how, how does that work exactly? I would love to get a, an explanation as to how more deregulation, more privatization, more corporatocracy is the way to go on this one. That's that's for sure. Inklings, thanks for follow. <clears throat> uh, Catalina, we don't know that actually, because there's countries that don't track it correctly. Um, we will never know what uh, China is rocking for a homeless population. It's just not a number that they're going to ever accurately produce. So we don't know. I'm all for criticism of the U.S. I'm all for bagging on the U.S., but also I'm an anarchist. Hi. For those of you who don't know that came over from Rad, uh, from Radhom, hi, my name's Kai. I'm an anarchist. That means I'm an equal opportunity offender. I see authoritarianism. I see hierarchical power structures. I don't care where they exist. I don't care what ethnic uh, ethnic majority is running the place. I call bullshit wherever I see it. Be it China, Russia, fucking take your pick. Constantinople. Um, but if all you can do is produce America bad rhetoric you're probably better off somewhere else to be perfectly honest because I require a certain level of nuance and elevated discussion on this channel. I do. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is yeah, America sucks, but so do a lot of places for a lot of reasons. And you should be willing and ready to criticize them for those reasons on the fly. Um, yeah, GL, that's fair. GL, that's 100% fair. <laughs> yeah, uh, many, um, at least ours isn't baked into our uh, our, uh, our dominant religion. Christianity's got its flaws, but at least it doesn't have an intrinsic caste system encapsulated in it like the, the Hindu nationalists definitely advocate for. <laughs> uh, Caleb, they all do. That's not, see, you could, you could drop Western entirely. You look at the intr intrinsic bias. Hey, it's Hazzy. Fucking, what's up, what's up, my little man? Um, you could drop, look at the intrinsic bias. Uh, bias. Uh, the entire Western world, minus a few shining beacons, have a prisoner-based slavery issue. I'm sorry, does the world not? Is Indonesia not using... Prison slave labor is China not using prison slave labor is Russia not using prison slave labor, right? Like this is, this is that sort of like intrinsic bias that I talk about. Like leftists especially are really bad at this. America bad. Yeah, I get it. America sucks. Place is fucking shithole. And we're, we're a predominant force in the world. That's why so many people focus on us is because let's face it until we get our shit together, the rest of it's going to fall apart. We do. Congratulations. That doesn't hold your point anymore. Like, you, you understand that, right? Yeah, we have to figure out a percentage. 
there's math to be done there and I'd trust Irish Swede to do it. Cause they're not all, the, the entirety of the prison population isn't actually being actively used for labor base. There's a percentage of it. It could be high, it could be 83, 82%. Um, or, or it could be lower. It'd be dependent on, um, because the federal prisons generally don't do it. The privatization at the federal prison level is approximately 3%. The majority of the, uh, private privatized, uh, privatized prisons that actually, uh, profit from, uh, the labor in the, in, in that results are generally state run facilities, um, and occasionally county run facilities. So again, we'd have to drill numbers. We'd have to drill numbers, but again, I'm comfortable doing that sometime at another time, but broad sweeping statements kind of are just cringe. They're cringe. Um, and I find generally speaking leftists that are willing to make statements like America is the worst in the world generally aren't comfortable criticizing anybody else, but the U S or Western white powers. They find it very difficult to levy criticism at authoritarian regimes when those authoritarian regimes don't have a dude that looks like me in a three piece suit in the front of it. So. See, that's at least a fair credit. See, GL, see, GL is a long time mem uh, member though. GL knows how to fucking put a statement together. Respect, Gio. Respect. Um, but, GL, also, I would argue um, that the big offenders in that list, man, they fucked up bad. Like, let's, let's talk Russia, China, right? Oof. Cringe. Super fucking cringe. We're going socialist. We're going communist. And time the per time to do the purges. Time to do the gulags. Time to do the uh, the vanguardism. Time to do the committees. Time to do the oppression. So, uh, what, what what's the term AES? Yeah, actually existing socialism. <clears throat> that the socialists are so in love with and enamored with Vietnam. One of their go-to examples that is hyper capitalistic. <laughs> Always a favorite. Ah, fucking with uh, central and South America. Oh, GL that's, that's, that's as American as uh, apple pie and baseball at this point. That's our favorite pastime is running a CIA backed coup in central and South America. Uh, well, uh, GL, my refutation to that would be Lenin, Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, right? Like, yeah, capitalism fucked with those systems pretty hard, but you know what? The ones that got to do their, their own, that did their own run of socialism slash communism, do they fucked up just as badly as, as anybody else? Because again, the issue here is authoritarianism. That's the core issue. It's authoritarianism. I don't care if you're brown, black, white. I don't care if you're liberal. I don't care if you're conservative. I don't care if you're libertarian, classical or neo. The fact of the matter is, is that the reason that America sucks as bad as it does is because of the authoritarian strain in America. The reason the USSR sucked as badly as it did was because of the authoritarian strain in the USSR. The reason Mao's fucking China sucked as badly as it did was because of the authoritarian strain in Mao's China. The issue is authoritarianism. When you believe you have the right to shoot someone in the face for not doing what you told them to do, congratulations, you're a fucking piece of shit. And any political or economic system you attempt to set up will be bad. It'll be bad. It will suck for whoever is involved. <laughs> Viva, I'm starting to sense a pattern.
No, revolution isn't inherently authoritarian. Holy shit. Okay, so Papa. Slave revolts are inherently authoritarian is what that says. That's that's the rework of your statement to prove, to disprove, right? This is the test that disproves the statement. Slave revolts are inherently authoritarian. You going to defend that statement? Because I sure as fuck am not. Overthrowing an oppressor. Eliminating the coercion in a system. Even by force. Is not authoritarian. What's up, Juan? Hola, ¿cómo está? Uh, so, anyway. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> Fucking meet up and a half going on there. Anarchism is the I told you so of history. It is. I, I enjoy my position as an anarchist. Doing geopolitical analysis, doing historical analysis, doing theory analysis. Dude, my position as an anarchist is a privileged one, basically, because I get to sit back and go, yeah, look where all you guys keep fucking up. The anarchists are on the right side of history every fucking time you look, basically. There's a few examples of assassinations during the propaganda of the deed era, 1880 to 1920, generally speaking. But for the most part, slave like slavery revolts were there, fucking uh, civil rights movement were there, suffrage movement were there, L uh, LGBT liberation, like queer liberation were there, indigenous rights were there, fucking like, yeah, for the most part, anarchism has been on the right side of history. We got one of the winningest track records as far as moral and uh, ethical victories go. Um, Uh, Lithuanian dude left. Ah, oh, is what it is. HIV justice campaigning there again. Fucking, it's 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 an actually um, fucking. <laughs> uh, it's an like we get the we get the win on that one. Uh, do I think violence can be useful? Hundred percent. I've done entire pieces on it. Um, did propaganda deed is officially disavowed in line with Twitch TOS? Yes, hundred percent. Propaganda D never advocate for blah 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 blah. Um, do I know uh, Lucia Turbia's uh, work? Um, oh God, is he the Spanish expropriator? Lucio, 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 Lucio. He's the Spanish expropriator who forged artwork, right? Like that was his method of expropriation was art forgery. Yes, yes. Am I correct? I, I'm correct on the art forgery too as well, Juan. More than an expropriator. I mean, no, I'm not okay. I'm gonna look him up. Hang on. Lucio again. All right, there we go. Um, yeah. No, I'm right. No, he, he robbed banks. Yeah, he robbed banks, but no, he was known for fucking forgeries. Yeah, no, I was right. Fucking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the right dude. Fuck with my brain like that. Yeah, he was literally, his occupations. Oh, for fuck's sake. Come on. This is this again. This is an example why leftists can't have a fucking conversation. Fucking no rob falsification. He was a fucking art forger by trade. He was a bricklayer and art forger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, okay, all right. This is just a language barrier. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. He was a he was an art forger. 
That's that's it's one of his tricks that he used. He'd steal a fucking painting or a uh, fucking or he'd um he would um forge a painting and then sell it to some rich douchebag and fucking take the gains and spend it on mutual. Yeah, he'd right click the JPEGs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's essentially what he was. He right he'd right he'd right click the JPEGs. Um, he liked to forge checks. He liked to forge checks. Yeah, but he his his skills as a forger were more than just that. But yeah, he was a Spanish expropriator who was a, who was a forger. Yeah, I have an entire book on fucking the Spanish and Italian expropriators. I also have a book on Chilean and Argentinian expropriators, specifically. So yeah, Lucio I would have come across in the the Spanish expropriators book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's up? Thanks for the resub, all black. Ah, uh, fucking. How's the all blacks um, fucking season? Is the rugby season on right now? What's the? Either way. How's it? How's it? How's their game going? Um, yeah, back when you could pa you could forge passports, dude. Forging passports now, Jesus Christ. Um, good luck. Good luck. That's that's some world class forgery territory. Like you don't want to fuck around with that. Trust me, you don't want to fuck around with that. Um. Ah, thank you, Rad Hom. Thank you. I, 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 my favorite Rad, like, if you ever want to see me, um, ah, pff, fuck, fuck that, fuck that, my, and I'll, I'll give you your anonymity, but my, um, uh, you want to see me geek out on anarchism sometime? Uh, get me going about uh, the archipelago, Rad, um, aka the Philippines. They really don't like uh, the the indigenous population. Really doesn't like the name the F Philippines because I mean, obviously, you know, King Philip. Um, but yeah, I I have I have gone off before about uh, uh, archipelago based anarchism because it's super. It's just super fascinating. Uh, so I I will just start fucking geeking out on various forums and the way it's, it's super effective. Anarchism is super effective in the archipelago. It's crazy. Either way. Um, yes, exactly. Viva. That's the, that's the trick. That's the fucking trick. Um, why is, thank you for the follow. Oh, fucking A. There we go. Oh, what are we talking about? Wait, why are you replying to yourself? Whatever. Anyway. Um, you went for a response to Caboose. I'm seeing it. All right. Ugh, I can't believe the fucking um, dude man, dude, Friedman guy fucking ran away, though. I mean... Papa John, I'm sure you didn't see it that way, but that's the sort of like, if if you can see an, an, if you can see that and then follow logical conclusions, like very quickly, that question, like isn't all revolution authoritarian, is authoritarian? One, you have to be able to define authoritarian. Two, you have to understand what a revolution is about. And then three, you can follow that to its logical conclusion because an oppressed class overthrowing their oppressor isn't an example of authoritarianism. And so the the obvious logical conclusion to go to is, is a slave overthrowing their master authoritarian? Because that is a revolt. 
that is a revolution. So that's that's how very, how so many people quickly got there. Was we have a lot of people on this channel that understand authoritarianism very well, um, and so just like that. Oh, all right. Let me uh, scroll back, because I know a few things went by. Oh, eh, whatever. I don't care about that conversation, though. Um, Hitler, Hitler was just a, a lightning rod. Hitler wasn't the, the source of, right? Like to talk about Nazi Germany, you have to start with the Weimar Republic, right? And to start with the Weimar Republic, you have to start with World War I. And so like the conversation with like, what happens without Hitler has a much greater historical context than most people are prepared to have a conversation about. There are many parallels to draw between the disenfranchised, disempowered public within the Weimar Republic and the sort of Trump supporters of today. There's there's many parallels to be drawn there. Um, and that would lead into Juan's question about how do you describe the working class situation in America? Bad. Bad, Juan. Bad. It's bad. It's bad. Um, couple generations now. It's it's never been great. Um, we fought for what we have, as far as labor gains. Remember, I, I mentioned the 1880s to 1920s. Um, we fought, fought hard, died, many died. Despite the color of their skin, despite uh, um, those hard won battles are being rolled back. Uh, Rad, you know what, Rad? I have never had you on my air. Do you want to jump into uh, fucking voice chat, Rad? And I'll move you over on air and you can ask me and I can geek out a little bit. We can have that conversation now if you want, Rad. But I understand you just came off stream and I understand what it's like after you finish a stream. You're like, I am fucking done. Okay, fair enough. Uh, jump into voice chat. I'll move you to on air. Don't worry, fucking Kvass is in voice chat. Don't worry about it. I'll move you up. <clears throat> Um, hey, Juan, you actually, I mean, fairly. Uh, and also in the Weimar Republic, uh, do you know what happened to the Communist Party when the uh, National Socialists came to power, came to bear? It was a thing. Yeah, you fought hard. Uh, <laughs> fought hard for those gains, and now the... Uh, um, and the night of the long knives happened. Yeah. Now the same people who died for these games are the ones who dismantled them because brown people. I mean, God, I mean, it's more complicated than that, but it's not more complicated than that. Right. That's the tragedy. That's the tragedy of it. It's really not that complicated, but it is right. All, all sociological interactions amongst human beings fundamentally becomes complicated. But at the end of the day, yeah, Fucking Mexicans. Ah! It's fucking pathetic. Yeah, Viva. No, I agree. It is. It's highly reductive, but that is what it reduces to. 100%. <laughs> it's, it's pathetic, but it's true. Oh. Kavaz. Uh, yeah, no worries. No worries, Rad. Um, let's see. <laughs> Died on the long fucking knives. Hear about the nurses in Australia protesting that the government threatened them with fines. Union said fuck you and marched anyway. All right, one respect. Um, 
two, they'd be charged federally here. Um, <laughs> nice wall, bro. She let me hit it because I'm an immigrant. Good on you. Get yours while you can get it. You know, get it how you get it, Ambrosio. Fucking ain't no hate in my game. Play, I gotta play the game, right? Um, Stalinist policy was was a give to fascists. I mean, the Stalinist policy one was a give to basically everybody who was an authoritarian dickhead, right? I mean, need we talk about the the Ribbentrop Molotov Pact, right? Like the Stalinist policy was authoritarianism is good, strong men are good, dictators are good. Fuck this proletariat of the people shit. Right? Like fucking learned men of academic uh, of the academics should be in charge of things. Social sciences, uh, social scientists should be in charge of things, and you need a strong leader. It, it one, it's not because of the international communist policy; it's because of communism itself. It's because of Marxism itself. Get fucking here. It's been a while since we've done this. Fucking here we go. This was, this is Bakunin's statement to Marx. For those of you who don't know, anarchists got kicked out of the first international because, well, we don't get along with communists very well. They're a bunch of authoritarian dickheads. We'll work with them, but at the end of the day, they're centralizing authoritarians. Um, Bakunin and Marx got us, uh, uh, Bakunin got the anarchists basically kicked out of the first international and not invited back to the second international because he and Marx fought like high school girls. They were constantly bickering, constantly. So here is Bakunin on Marx. <clears throat> Marx is an authoritarian and centralizing communist. He wants what we want, the complete triumph of economic and social equality, but he wants it in the state and through the state power, through the dictatorship of a very strong and so to say despotic provisional government, that is by the negation of liberty. His economic ideal is the state as sole owner of the land and of all kinds of capital, cultivating the land under the management of state engineers and controlling all industrial and commercial associations with state capital. We want the same triumph of economic and social equality through the abolition of the state and all that passes by the name of law, which in our view is the permanent negation of human rights. We want the reconstruction of society and the unification of mankind to be achieved, not from above downwards by any sort of authority, nor, nor by social, socialist officials or engineers or other accredited men of learning, but from below upwards by the free federation of all kinds of workers associations liberated from the yoke of the state. That's the difference, right? It's not Stalinism. It's not Leninism. It's Marxism. It, it, the core of the entirety of the ideology, from the seed from which it sprang, which, by the way, Marx and Engels stole a whole lot of their ideas from uh, from indigenous societies. Just know that. They, let's just say, there's a lot of uh, carbon on that fucking copy paper. Um, but they um, they included what was a classical European trait: centralizing authoritarianism. So, of course, those things born of Marxism carry that trait. Leninism, Stalinism, Maoism, they're all centralizing authoritarian structures. Ah, yes, and that is, um, that is Rabbit's piece on stolen anarchy, the indigenous elements. Um, and it was, it's anarchy, not anarchism. There is a distinction to be made, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get into it here. Um, uh, agua. So, yeah, no, if, uh, I, I, how do I, how do I put it? Um, yeah, fuck, fuck the communists. <laughs> so it's just fucking, uh, you know what? I'll just go fucking meme lord version on this one. Um, all right, let me your your volume. Holy shit, your volume is low. I've got you two hundred percent. Can you say hello again? Okay. Uh, I have ways I can boost on my end. Yes, that would be great if you my could. My computer does this sometimes. Yeah, because you're way low on my side. 
Wait, you're telling me China is in a functioning democracy? Hmm, interesting. Really? Right? Wow. Crazy. Um, I am agree. A yeah, good one. So this yeah, is right there. Uh, try one more time. Testing, testing. Can you get it a little higher? Testing, testing. Mm. Um, the difference. Uh, count to five. Testing, testing. Oh, that one's better. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now we're in the neighborhood. Okay. Uh, we will. And there's everything on my back end sent to Max. All right. D dry, dial it back by like 5% or something like that. Just, okay. to, just to eliminate some of the noise. Um, But yeah. So. Uh, function with Discord. Yeah, I even have like, I have audio boosters. I have like, my Discord is modded. Um, for those of you who don't know, you can mod Discord. Better Discord. Install it. Use it. Get mods. Fucking eliminate that Nitro shit if you want. There's all sorts of stuff you can do to make Discord better. Um, Splendid. All right. Um, That's stuff I'll need to look into. Yeah. Um, how um, How's your side of the world? Um, I'm going pretty okay. Uh, we had, our side of the world in general, we had a giant gang of absolute cooked units uh, descend upon Canberra, demand governmental change for two weeks, fail to do anything, get confused and leave. I I know that feeling. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, we had our anti-vaxxers had a giant congregation. Uh, and we've got, yeah, a few people from there that who are trying to run for parliament on a... Um, Law is illegitimate, and I will erase the government with my sovereign citizen powers. I love angle. the sovereign citizens. I'm sympathetic to them. Like it, it's just a matter of like it's magic, right? It's magical thinking. Yeah. Like, even if even if all of that is real, you, you understand like why you develop such views and beliefs as a defense mechanism. Well, I um, mean, even if it's all like actual like codified law, like even if they're speaking real, that's not how the system works. Like there's a pragmatic undermining of sovereign citizenry is sovereign citizenry that doesn't even have to discuss yeah. like the crazy like conspiratorial stuff it's just like do, do you think like when the cop pulls you over and you yell fucking i'm traveling i have a right to travel this isn't i'm not participating in a commercial action and which you is somehow over override the yeah. power that has been placed in that person to do what that person thinks they are meant to do yeah like do you think that uh, magically resolves the situation it's it's yeah that's like i'm i'm sympathetic to them like it's just it's like i tonight the first hour was me ranting about how leftists suck at talking to people basically yeah and like and look so, good something that i will um uh, sorry very exhausted. My brain forgot the thing it was going to say. Please continue. I just, you know, I'm like, this, you know, the truckers. Like, I, I, eh, Karina, thank you. Um, fucking, I, you know, I was like, look, I'm sympathetic to truckers. I understand it. Like, authoritarian mandates by government, uh, governmental structures. Like, are you kidding me? And they're using, like, civil disobedience. Right? Like, this, this is across the board. This is, a, these are things I'm sympathetic to. But I also uh, believe that, like, va voluntary vaccination is sort of like one of the few final threads holding this civilization together. And, like, that's just sort of like, I, I don't think I should have to force you to get a vaccine. Uh, you, you should want to get a yeah. vaccine. Like, do you want polio? Like, that's um, weird for me. How do you feel about? positive motivating uh, using positive incentives as motivators for people to get vaccine uh, for example so one of the few genuinely good economic policies that the Australian government did since Whitlam um, was the Labour government at the time's handling of the global financial crisis they saw it happening and they went okay uh, every adult Australian gets $900 now. And every adult Australian got $900 to spend as they wished. And most of them were like, it's a financial crisis. I am poor. I am spending this in my local community on like groceries and essential services and getting my, you know, a hardware person to fix up my sink and the things that they needed. And our economy just kept chugging through it. For a while there, the Australian dollar outperformed the American dollar just because our country was the only one that noticed that you could do that thing and actually 
decided to do it that I'm aware of. Um, and I want, uh, like, how do you feel about similar things about vaccines? Say, uh, each time someone gets a vaccine, you provide them with a cash rebate from the government. You're like, here, spend this however you like. I think it would work. I think my ethical framework prevents me from supporting it. Here's why. Okay. We live within a capitalist modality of operation, and that capitalist modality uses coercive elements such as lack of access to health care, uh, possible homelessness, possible starvation, these sorts of things, right? And so providing an alleviating factor while uh, engaging in a coercive authoritarian mechanism is kind of slimy. Um, Even if you're doing it for the right reason, it's still kind of sketchy. Does that, does that apply to all alleviating factors? Such as? Uh, a soup kitchen. Running a soup kitchen no, is because introducing the soup, the, because alleviating the soup, factors into the environment. Because the soup kitchen isn't the, the thing that could alleviate those actual factors in society. Right? Like if the soup kitchen was the one who was running the economy it's in your providing town. providing a Band-Aid rather than yeah. here is the money that you need to survive. Yeah. And because people are facing the negative pressure from capitalism going, I will fucking eat you if you don't give me money. Yes. Um, it's, people being in a compromised position and thus people taking it when they normally wouldn't because of being coerced by the yeah. external circumstance that they I, both that's, exist in. It makes yeah, me, I, I see your objection. It there. makes me feel bad as an anarchist. <laughs> like that's, and that's the thing is like, I, 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 I have sympathies with these people. I disagree with them fundamentally, but like everything they're doing, I don't have an issue with. I just disagree with the yeah. core of their argument. I, I believe in vaccination programs. I, I, you know, I'm the son of a fucking nurse for Christ's sake, right? Like, I don't want mumps or measles or rubella fucking flourishing in my society. I'd prefer not to have a polio outbreak in my lifetime or smallpox making a resurgence, yeah. right? Like, that's this sort of shit that I bought. This is one of the few threads holding this shit together at a fundamental level. And it bothers me that, like, we have to coerce people into this position because, I mean, I've seen the photos. I've read the stories of the polio era of vaccination. Dude, they lined up down the streets for polio vaccines. Yeah. Look, I, I, this is like, I think vaccination is one of the few points where I turn away from my general libertarian bent to raw practicality of we need to keep people safe. Whether we do that by culturally convincing people, which will take longer and takes developing other forms of power and in the current system, the kind of wealth that just makes us another cog in the current system. Um, my tired ass lost its train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're fine. Um, uh, also, um, uh, somebody asked, um, fucking Yogi, uh, it's the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, a.k.a. Food Stamps. Zippy gave you the food stamps, but SNAP stands for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Um, that's what SNAP is. Um, yeah, it, it is... Oh, yeah, it's 100% AstroTurfed, uh, GL. Yeah, like the trucker stuff is AstroTurfed. We see that with the fucking whatever the donation site is um, being hacked. Dude, all the, the the payments, like, are you kidding me? Like $91,000 from a tech billionaire in California and shit like that, right? Like, there's no way around that. But we have to have the nuance as, this is, this is, again, this is just the theme of tonight's show, I guess. Fucking leftists suck at this shit. I don't know what the deal is, but I mean, I was arguing earlier in the stream that like essentially right wingers, conservatives, love them or hate them, the mod the predictive model they've built for interacting with humans in the world is a more effective model than the leftist model. It just is. Like you can't argue with results. They can they can track and predict better and manipulate better than we can. And for a variety of reasons, um, but we suck at having this conversation with people. 
Like this is this is what I, I I'm trying to hammer into leftists' heads because I witnessed a conversation earlier today in which uh, what what yeah, what's the, what's the conversation that all you're of finding them. we all of them it's it's all of them okay it's, so it's it's the fact uh, that leftists don't pri- they deprioritize the things that should be prioritized and prioritize the things that in the in the moment in that machiavellian moment right this is i argue okay. all the time what are, what are the things that you think should be prioritized manipulation machiavellianism i'm not i'm not fucking okay. i i think the left needs to understand how to control the conversation better and it, like plant those seeds because what we entr- what we end up near inevitably doing and i watched it happen today somebody was expressing displeasure at the general poor performance of the masses of humanity and the poor performance of democracy as a system right um and whether that holds merit or not isn't really the point the point is that two separate people came in only to criticize to castigate the individual's vernacular rather than to participate in the conversation two separate oh, people came in to do that specifically and not contribute anything to the conversation only derail it and i'm like look if you wish to castigate a person's working class vernacular, that's fine. But this is fundamentally one of those issues leftists do all of the time. Go to the fucking docks. Yeah. Talk to the dock workers. Go to a fucking trade school. Talk to the tradies. Right? Go yeah. to where these people are. And I am constantly pissed at the left for abandoning labor, for abandoning the like individualist spaces, such as like gym bros. Right? Gym bros are ripe for libertarian picking because, you know, let's face it, nobody's going to lift the, the weights for you. You have to do it yourself. That bootstrap mentality is really easy pickings for their brain it's perfect manipulation territory and so we just can we just conceded all of these places as as leftists we're yeah. like yeah we just walked away from them and then when we try and get these spaces back what do we do we walk up and tell them shut the fuck up stop talking like that now listen to me oh that's a great way to manipulate somebody that's that's so, definitely um, a, a means of getting the job done uh if I may add something, uh, so an under, more of an understanding of Machiavelli, yes. Hopefully also more of an understanding of Edward Bernays. That's fine. He was an absolute yep. fucking asshole, but my God, did he understand you know, how to shift how people think about things. Was it you or Freud's nephew? Scale. It was Freud's nephew, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's Freud. Uh, it was I always forget which nephew he was, but yeah, it's Freud's nephew. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Mod- the father of modern uh, propaganda and advertising. Helped Freud become popular. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I think that I, I, you know, and as an anarchist, I think because I was uh, 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 La Tropa. Uh, thank you for the follow. Um, as an anarchist, I was trying to explain that, like, we more than anybody else need to be some of the most dynamic. And um, willing to run like Machiavellian lines because we have some of the most nuanced conversations and nuanced like rhetoric to add to the dialectical exercise, right? Because like trucker conversation as an example, right? Like what are we going to do? Shit on civic disobedience now? What are we going to do? Yeah. Shit on government authoritarian like, or uh, uh, like pushback to governmental authoritarianism? Right. Like how, how are you going to fucking like do that line? You have to be willing to bite the bullet and say something like, I sympathize with the truckers, but I disagree with them. Here's why. Right. And unfortunately what I see is more blanket statements coming from the, the progressivists, from the leftists, be they, you know, X, Y, or Z. And we were literally in like, I was mid conversation mid rant on this and some dude came in with some ukrainian takes and like two separate people tried to time him out and mod immediately timed him out i'm like what the fuck are you guys doing what i i like being able to have a chat with people um i've got hard rules that 
if something gets, um, you know, if the rules get crossed, I'm just like, nah, goodbye. I, um, but you you can get, like, you can get people to stick around and listen if you just communicate to them on their level where they're at. If you can figure out how to talk to them and entertain them, we, they, when they leave, they may well not have, not have changed their mind, but you've laid the seed of something, an idea that... This Either is, take roots in takes root in them, or maybe they talk to someone else. I un, I untimed and, him out, brought him back, had the conversation, gave him a whole bunch of talking points he had not even ever heard of: demographical collapse in Russia, the elimination of the journeyman program under the USSR, the uh, the the, the uh, dictator's dilemma Putin is facing, the port access, the economic issues, like X, Y, and Z. Like I ran through them. This is what he said: "You gave me a lot to think about that I'd never even heard of," and then he he left. That's a win in my book. Yeah. That's a win. Right. And that's, that's, that's that knee jerk reaction that like, and again, this isn't just leftist spaces by all means. This is not a condemnation of solely leftists. The right wingers do this too. It's a human nature issue that fucking la 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 censorship fucking shut it down sort of mentality that it prevails across the political spectrum for sure. But I'm not a right winger. So, you know, I have to, I have to keep my own house clean, not someone else's. And so, yeah, it, it was, I was on a fucking tear about, yeah, I, I've been saying that for years and years and years now that the left needs to be more comfortable with a level or degree of Machiavellianism that we have to be um, willing to engage in a, a level of manipulative dialectical exercise, understanding that like a Socratic process is a method of manipulating somebody's psyche. That's what you're doing. Get comfortable with it. Do it for the right reasons. Do it for altruistic reasons. Do it for ethical reasons. Make sure it fits your ethical framework, but don't shy away from it because how else are we going to convince anybody? Yeah, we... There's a multiplicity of approaches that we need to be able to take. Um, People don't like to think about... So people on the left, um, you know, like to think of themselves generally as moral people, moral beings. They have ideas of what good people do and do not do. Some of those ideas probably get in their way of, you know, being as tactical as possible with messaging. Um <laughs> Because a a certain level of tacticality um, might involve like presenting. I don't know. It depends how much of that is getting through to people. How much of that is manipulating people more broadly? I think if you're just being Machiavellian in trying to get people to realize something, that's better than being Machiavellian in the manipulation of people. But then you're taking, you're interacting with someone's, uh, like imposing yourself on someone else's will. So you are removing their freedom and making them into something. I would say, I I would say that how much you value. I would, I would argue that it isn't a removal of freedom that the, the, the process of like the Kantian processes, uh, processes, or at least the Kantian version of like a Hegelian process is a manipulative process. It's a participatory okay. process, but it's a manipulative I am, process. I am largely a philosophy <clears throat> noob. I recognize a lot of the names. Okay. Some things I vaguely know what ideas are attached to them. So the Kantian interpretation of the Hegelian process, because when you hear these terms, generally people identify it as uh, Hegel. But the fact of the matter is, is it's, it's the Kantian uh, interpretation of the Hegelian process. So it's, in, it's important to make that distinction depending on who you're talking to. But essentially what I'm referring to is thesis, antithesis, synthesis. Right? Okay. I'm, I, we're taking me... And then something you have, which opposes me. And then I, we're attempting to create something new out of it. And the result of their interaction. Yes. And so, but what you put into that process, what you put into that dialectical process 
is up for grabs because the thesis and the antithesis are generally opposed, but they don't have to be like diametrically uh, opposed. They can have nuances and characteristics that take each other into account, right? It's a things that are intersecting, not just always things that are mutually annihilating. Correct. Correct. And so it's, it's a far more complicated process than just like, you know, one plus negative one equals zero sort of situation. It, and so when you start to factor in those broader strokes, then you, you start to take into account game theory. You start to take into account ethical frameworks. You start to take into account sociological factors, environmental factors, you know, genetic, epigenetic, that sort of thing. Um, and it also you have to take into account, which, I mean, I can see that over there for Tus. I'll read it verbatim, but um, also I'm just going to uh, uh, allude to it. Um, you have to take into account like uh, societal factors such as um, baggage or biases attached to or connotations attached to terminology, such as manipulation in this case, is what Fertus is pointing out. It's seen as a bad word, but it isn't. Manipulation isn't inherently negative. It's not... That, that, that's that's a sociological attachment that you, pot- you potentially, I'm using you, not necessarily as you specifically, but you attach to uh, the term. It's something we do literally every day to one another. Think of it that way. How do you make so, someone do something they don't want a priori want to do? You can convince them, you can manipulate them, or you can coerce them. And note the hierarchy here. You can either tackle the, the mind, things- heart, or body. On the things that we learned from Benes the, about that um, is uh, use – if a term has a negative connection and connotation, use a different term. Benes was the godfather of the propaganda industry. The only reason we don't have a propaganda industry is it did propaganda on itself and renamed itself public relations after World War II when propaganda became a dirty word. Um uh, so we've got, you know, the the, the concept of, um, I guess, manipulation, but for uh, good, like manipulation, but for good outcomes is what we're trying to talk about. If there's a term, fun, that fun, can mean fun that, aside, that's different um, from manipulation. Do you know I what the, know. Do you know what the CIA calls psychological operations these days? Since since after Vietnam, we've called it this. I'm not certain. Perceptions management. Ooh, that's what's Ooh, very that, subtle. I like that's it. what psyops internally are known in the intelligence services in uh, in the U.S. It's perceptions management. Yeah. So, I I I understand. I I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, there's there's an argument that happens on this channel and amongst community members and longtime members regularly. Uh, I I'm more than content tilting at windmills. Um, Uh, for certain terms certain terms i will rebrand i will create new terms and certain terms i will use yeah um and like anarchism is one of those like i've been suggested ages and ages and ages and so many times that like just pick a new word and you'd be fine probably with most of these people i'm willing to die on that hill one way or another um but also then i use i turn around and use something like thesusian methodology right there is no there is no thesusian method i i literally created that based off the ship of theseus what is the active form you know how can i i, I turn this this word and this concept into an active form of political yeah. activism i you know and i spun up thesusian methodology i have no problem doing either or um and you know having a discuss- high level discussion with somebody like yourself right you know i have no problem using machiavellianism and manipulation those sorts of things yeah. because I, I i trust that like the people i'm i'm interacting with can grasp can grok what the fuck i'm putting down right but i do but, um i do effective th- messaging yeah and and that's 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 other context. that speaks to my original point. Basically, when I'm watching this conversation occur today, I wasn't a participant in it. I was just watching it occur, and literally two separate people step in to just yell about a word choice that this individual that was a some that several people were attempting to engage with and change their mind or at least figure out where their position was derived from so that maybe they could make, you know, prep some ground for some change. 
and instead a couple of woke scoldy leftists just literally step in the middle of the fray one and then a little bit goes yeah. by and then another and it's like do you have anything positive to contribute to this process and apparently not yeah and that's that's i see that time and time and time again it's like a lot of leftist activists don't know how to speak to people Right. Like they're, yeah. they're comfortable um, speaking to like political activists and the politically minded, but not like a dock worker. So can I tell you one of the most useful theater exercises that I ever got to do as part of my uni training? Yeah, by all means. Fuck yeah. Um, so when we, uh, this was one of our like first things that we do was called mumming. Weird term for a performance, I know, but mumming's an old style of performance where performers would move around the countryside and stop it's, over at yeah, it's uh, folk place. pubs and manors and perform for their dinner and for whatever money people would give them. Um, in this, we had to go down. Our first part of the assignment was to go down to boost. the pubs in Bathurst, where I went to uni, um, and just talk to the people in the pubs and buy them drinks and listen to their stories and what's going on in the town and then to go away spend two weeks making a performance for those people and go and perform it in front of them make them laugh make them have a good time here's a kind of vague temp plate guide that you use you make everything kind of you know comedic and over exaggerated mm -hmm. if you can make it lewd make it luder um and just completely, you know, going into a theatre production degree and the first thing we learn is just completely dropping our perception of who we would should be thinking about making entertainment for and the assumptions we should have about audiences and just, yeah, put your hat of ego at the door. Don't be so fucking pure and precious. Meet people where they are entertain them, engage with them, and try and engage them with stories that are relevant to their lives and their struggles. Yeah. I, I, I think, exercise. I think a lot of probably you and I like practical praxis and like methodologies, um, probably come from the exact same like upbringing, like, right. Two classes of drama a day for four years, plus a touring repertory company in my past. Right. Like it's, Yep. Yeah. Like it's, it's theater training. Similar enough. Yeah. It's, it's theater training. Uh, for me, it was part theater, part circus. At that, yeah. The repertory company got me the, 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 just, just a touch of the fucking carny that like I needed to, to look and then appreciate and love. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I'm proud of that when I, I bring somebody on the air that it isn't straight combat that like a few years, a few years, a few weeks ago, uh, this dude from Denmark who's now in Canada mm. who really like did not understand anarchism is like, isn't that, you know, the fucking classic propagandization it's chaos. It's, you know, and well, but capitalism yep. is the best we have, right? And so I just dump into a simple Socratic methodology, start asking questions, try to figure out what's going on under the hood and figure out, you know, just start pulling out the threads and pulling out the pieces and looking at them. Okay. And then, and then causing him to look at them, right? Like w why? Well, why is that? That's great. And like, that's, it's as simple as just learning how to have a conversation with somebody and not overreact to certain things. Right. It, and the, for, for those wondering, I, it, the, the thing that I'm tap dancing around was the fact that this, this individual basically said the dreaded R slur several times. And that was what the, the pair of leftists hyper-focused on rather than any of the underpinnings of anything else, right? I, I grew up in a generation where everything was gay and everything was retarded. Like, that's just the truth of the matter. Like, growing up in the 90s in America, these are just words you hear, right? It's, it's the similar context to how a lot of the boomers and older uh, treat, you know, Negro and coloreds, right? 
it's super uncomfortable for certain people to hear of a certain generation, but there's others of those generations that hear those words and are like, yeah, I've, I've heard it so many times, you know, Xbox live call of duty lobby territories. Like the emotional reaction isn't there for me. And you have to be able to distance yourself because if I were engaging in that with say Theo and he said like, Oh, that's, you know, uh, anarchism's gay or something like that offhanded. What am I going to do? Focus on the gay, right? That's, that's non-productive to the conversation. It's a non-starter. It, later down the road, we can discuss, you know, whether, you know, certain spaces would react poorly to this, you know, verbiage choices and that, you know, it'd be best if problematic, blah, 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 blah. But for the purposes of this conversation, I would derail my entire process to, to go down that avenue. And it's like, which, which you have to learn how to prioritize in real time, right? Triage. It's a medical process, really. You're triaging. Is, is their language choice the problem or is it the underpinnings of the philosophical uh, system that they operate on that's the problem? Yep. And if, if, if that's just a manifestation of, then you're treating symptoms rather than treating causes. So why don't you go ahead and focus on treating the cause and not go chasing symptoms? And that's what a lot of leftists, and when I say a lot, I mean most, seem to do these days is that they chase symptoms rather than causes look i as as much as i try to do good and do things well i'm sure there have probably been times when i've slipped up and fucked up on that um but you know just it is something to aim to be more aware of um i think it is easy to be very harsh on the the crowds of cookers that we've got flowing through uh, Canberra at the moment, <laughs> um, and I will admit to oh. having a um, bit of Schadenfreude seeing a post from <laughs> one of them um, uh, making complaints about uh, diarrhea, pink eye, and foot fungus <laughs> spreading through the camps. Um, <laughs> I, I will admit to appreciating the irony of that and having a good laugh. I look. I have no. I I mince no words or or bu I make no bones about. It. Wise, thanks for the sub. Um, it, it it's I I am a firm believer in the euphemism treadmill. Right, like this is every time somebody fucking comes down on somebody with the dreaded R slur. I'm like, am am I cool to say idiot? How about imbecile? How about moron? Yeah. You know these are all the exact same word, right? Like they're, they're um, all medical, con uh, previously medically con also, contextual defined words for, you know, various degrees of intelligence or deficit, uh, you know, uh, deficit, developmental deficits. Like, uh, so there's also a question of like how conceptually far the shift has moved. Uh, so this is one of those things that linguists think this is how, the, how it went, but we're not completely sure. But it's I've it seems mm, it's what's been presented as the most likely when I've looked it up. I'm not a linguist, but I found this interesting. Um, bad, the word bad uh, seems to have potentially um, homophobic and transphobic origins. Uh, it comes from uh, I'm going to be mispronouncing this because it's Old English uh, baden uh, or badel. Uh, it's means mannish or sorry uh a effeminate man effeminate man yeah um and was used for like you know gay men and gender non-conforming people who were it's also used, uh, born yeah, into male bodies hermaphroditism uh intersexuality yeah. uh effeminate men so but look, if, if we want to go really like hard on so you know i've seen people argue that you know there's there's no context in which any word that's been used in a slur can ever be used there you are are you going to remove bad from your lexicon i again yeah this is why i'm pretty a much every term that we have that means something negative has been associated with something well and thus is problematic about something i love that you temporally you went back and i go forward when i when i have to argue it i i it, i i i i enlightened uh some woke scoldy leftists that tried to do this to me one time i said did you know that amongst the youths of today 
that it is commonplace to use the handicap emoji in place of where we used to use the dreaded R slur. I said, now, what are you going to do with that symbol? It's not even a word. How are you going to treat this? What's, what's your go-to? It's go now to? a pictogram. Yep. You, you have to treat a pictogram as a slur now. How's that going to, how's that going to fuck this up for you? Right? Like this, this is the euphemism treadmill. You got rid of one. So one took its place. The concept doesn't go away. The insult doesn't go away. The wish or desire to insult using a term doesn't go away. What you've all, all you've done is created some weird magical spell around a strange mouth and throat and tongue noise that we make. It's not even a thing. It's, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a, right? Like it's, it's a weird throat and mouth noise thing we do. And we've at the same time when, you know, someone has been actively traumatized by a term, I can't blame them for individually. I can't with this general use individually. I can't, but this is the same conversation I have with people when they come through and ask about the, um, anarchism rape situation. What about the rapists? There's literally an anarchist pamphlet called what about the rapists, by the way, it's a conversation anarchists get all the time. Well, what about the rapists? Here's the deal. So, uh, societally, we believe in reparative and restorative justice processes, right? If the community gets their hands on the rapist, then the truth of the matter is, is that we will give them every chance, every, uh, every advantage we can. We will put them in an area because the individual and the society both have the right to self-defense. So we will put them, we will sequester them at a secure location. The society is not threatened by their, uh, by their previous behavior, but we will treat them with the most humane, uh, uh, you know, uh, presence that we possibly can. The, but the truth of the matter is, is that the individual also has the right to self-defense. And if the individual is the one being raped, chances are when we get there, the rapist probably won't be around much longer, right? Like that's just the truth of the matter. And that's how I see it. The same sort of dichotomy, the same sort of uh, dual uh, uh, duality that exists within society. Look, I understand there are individuals that have been individually traumatized and, and groups that have been traumatized by uh, people that use these terms in coordination and cooperation with their actions. I would never, I would never negate or deny your experiential data um, that has occurred with that or your emotive reaction to that. But so, uh, um, societally, we have to take in a so bigger picture. What gets done with people who are not redeemable? You sequester them for as long as you possibly can uh, with the best, uh, best best intentions possible. And for people who have no reference points, because generally Americans and Westerners have no fucking reference points for humane treatment of prisoners, it's difficult to use terminology such as prisons, prisoners, cops, like that sort of thing. We just avoid those terms entirely. But if I have to give an example, I generally look towards the uh, Nordic, specifically Norway, uh, 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 the Norwegian model of uh, long-term imprisonment. It essentially looks like a college dorm. They have access to um, philosophers. They have access to edu furthering education. They have access to mental health care. They have access to physical health care. They're not denied or mistreated in any way. They have a, a fulfilling life by all accounts. It's the most humane possible treatment that you can, you can give another human being. You just make sure that they don't have access to the rest of society because the fact of the matter is, is that they have proven themselves irredeemable beyond that point. And society and the individual both have the right to self-defense. Okay. Yep, I can, I can accept that. Yeah. That's my – look as, as, because as much as I dislike it, there are some people in the world who seem to be, you know, just the occasional person who something is – different and they are you know wind up as a serial killer or mm -hmm. a unrepentant serial rapist and yeah as long as we have ways to keep those very worst people the fuck away yeah from anyone they can harm yeah. i i generally believe that about 98 percent are savable 
I'd go as mm. I'd go as high as ninety nine. I recognize that I am talking about a very a yeah. very small number. It's it's, it's a it minutia. Something that but they exist needs to be able to be handled. Yes, it, they exist, and to deny that they exist is foolhardy at best, and undermines your own argument at the end of the day. So, you know, yeah, agreed wholeheartedly. But I think that once you alleviate a lot of those uh, uh, fucking, oh God, fucking shut up fucking MLs, uh, once you alleviate those material conditions, right, then then a lot of that falls. A lot of that falls, right? You address poverty and inequity and inequality and the, you know, lack of education in the society. And also, um, I mean, look, I'm a gay dude who wants nothing to do with any of that children shit, but time and time and time again, dude, I don't know how many fucking sociological studies need to come out to say this before people understand this is a fundamental concept. You want to lift up your society, three people or Three billion people. It doesn't fucking matter. You empower young mothers. That's it. That's the trick. Amazing. Yeah, it's it's really not that complicated. It's 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 literally that simple. Empower young mothers. Give them what they need. Dude, we had a fucking study come out here after the the, the pandemic bullshit that uh, providing us cash assistance to young mothers led to an IQ increase in the early childhood development of uh, of their kids. No, really? Are you? <laughs> you you got to be shitting me. No way. Wow. No way that that such a causal thing could happen. <laughs> You mean, you mean making sure kids are fed while their brains are developing is a it, it actually helps for their development? Wow, that's fucking crazy. I don't know. We should probably write that down somewhere. Fuck it. I, you know, yeah. It, it's, it's, once you alleviate a whole host of those conditions, a lot of the downstream effects clear up. So, like, that's, yep. that's a non-issue for us. Um and I did, I did, pro- I'll fucking Tokyo drift this a little bit because I did promise you I would fucking geek out about it a little bit. The deal with the archipelago is, is like hilarious for an anarchist. Um, there's this guy, um, Baz Umali, who's uh, an anarcho- anarcho activist uh, on the archipelago. And I really do, I, I really make an effort to call yeah. it the archipelago because the, the indigenous population really hates the fucking name Philippines. So I know, I know nothing about archipelago anarchism. I didn't even know that there was archipelago anarchism until you mentioned it tonight. It's, so. it's because, okay, so one, the Philippines prefers to refer to themselves as the archipelago because they don't, I mean, let's face it, it's named after King Philip, right? It's fucking, it is the definition of colonialism run amok. Um, Hey, fucking Viva, wait, you're treating the cause, not the symptoms. That's not how we do stuff. Um, (laughs) It's literally named after King Philip. So yeah, you can imagine the indigenous population slash anarchists are not fond of calling it the Philippines. So they just refer to it generally with native terminology or the archipelago if they're speaking to outsiders in that way. And I learned a lot from Buzz. Um, But basically, uh, B-A-S space U-M-A-L-I, Buzz Umali. Um, He... The archipelago has a long and really interesting history with anarchism. Um, they have the indigenous side of it that we traditionally, like theorists, would refer to as anarchy. Right? We make this distinction: anarchy, anarchism, uh, anarchy, anarchist, anarchism. Right? Anarchy is sort of the thing that's been with us forever. It's it's been a part of human social development for as near as we can tell a very very long time. Um. Indigenous societies use a variety of these methodologies, distributed uh, dis- distributed hierarchies, heterarchies, um, grassroots organizing, um, bottom up uh, decision making, um, these sorts of elements that you you come to really notice within anarchist spaces generally gets referred to colloquially as anarchy and anarchists are the sort of like formal uh, theorists that come forward after the sort of European renaissance of it and then anarchism is the sort of formalized theory that includes and takes into account all of these elements and so they have the indigenous society anarchy start like right out the gate they've got distributed uh uh, structure across because it's an archipelago right they've got a whole series of little islands 
spread throughout. So they've got lots of small communities that are networked with each other to keep each other yep. like alive and well, and they trade resources. And, yeah, 100%. Somebody's rich in this, somebody's rich in that, somebody's rich in the other thing, and you 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 create a distributed grid, right? When we talk about, uh, I talk about cybernetic theory a lot on this channel, it's, uh, it's distributed topologies, right? It's centralized, decentralized, and distributed topologies. And so topologists would look at the archipelago immediately and be like, oh, this is a distributed topology. Okay, that's really fucking cool. Um, and so they've got all of that intrinsic in their, in their like operating modality, right? That's, that, that's how they had to survive, right? And it's, that's what uh, yeah. enables them to survive. And so it, it lifts them up as a community. And then what happens is colonialism, right? The Spaniards. Oh, no, not big bad colonialism this, always ruined the fucking day. Well, see, it didn't in this. Oh. Well, it kind of, it, it did um, in most sorry, ways. Just, just very quickly on the note of colonialism. Um, uh, the other day was the 14th, uh, and I need to say... Uh, happy Captain Cook fucking deserved his day. <laughs> uh, and thank you, Hawaii. Thank you, Hawaiians. You did the world a solid. <laughs> happy anniversary of Captain Cook getting got. Getting got. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the it's 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 interesting for anarchism. Colonialism actually did kind of a favor to the archipelago. It's a very backhanded favor. It's a very brutal favor, but it's it's kind of hilarious in, in in like historical context because colonialism rolls through, and of course, you know the indigenous population does what they do. They fucking resist. They you know they put up a good fight, you know, here and there. But what happens with a bunch of their leaders is they fucking throw them. They throw them in chains and they send them back to Spain to be imprisoned. Well, around that same period of colonial Spanish con conquest in the Philippines, what's going on in Spain? Well, Spanish anarchists are raising a muck. They are absolutely Amazing. fucking this place up a little bit here and there. So there's a lot of Spanish anarchists in prison as well. So they took this okay, group. So, so we have the rise of the Spanarchists. Basically, here for this. yes. So they take this group from from the archipelago, and they're like, "We're putting you in prison," and they throw them in jail. Basically, with this whole crew, they're like, "Yeah, here's what you need to know," right? And a lot of this just lines up with their like intrinsic indigenous knowledge and operating methods, right? It, it makes sense. It clicks for them right away. They're like, "Yeah, what is this? It's anarchism." Cool. A few of them get released and they go back to the archipelago. Now with newfound <laughs> knowledge and experience, it's like they always, we joke about modern prison, right? It's a training camp for criminals, right? You go in as a petty car thief and they, then you come out with new to skills. get a training camp for anarchists, yeah. which gave them a bunch of modalities that dovetailed well with the modalities they had already culturally developed over the course of thousands of years yeah it was it was hilarious happenstance that the spanish did to themselves right like it, they absolutely did this to themselves so the 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 the, uh, the indigenous uh uh like uh, you know the indigenous revolutionaries go back home and they take a whole bunch of these these ideas with them is sort of um what would essentially inevitably inspire Nestor Machno and sort of the Ukrainian black army district like imagine a distributed hierarchically organized ground up militia system that can go toe to toe with the russians Right, like that's crazy to even think of in its concept. Now put it on the archipelago, right? Now we're starting to see some some shit kick off as a result of this. And the Spanish are, you know, f fighting on multiple fronts. They're not, you know, it. Yeah. So fast forward, they lose it for a bit. The anarchism falls out of uh, out of favor, and in fact, what uh, yeah. what takes over is Marxist Leninism. The communists, you know, the, the the red flag furls across the globe and the workers of the world. I'm and sure down it was Trump. marvelously effective. Oh, it was terribly effective. Um, they completely fuck shit up for many, many decades, uh, caused numerous economic collapses. And up to recently, the communist party in the Philippines assassinated uh, one dude. It tried to assassinate a couple of dudes using landmines. 
And you th- fucking what? Yeah, yeah. That's that's recently, like within the past couple of decades, they've been blowing people up still with landmines. That's the Communist Party of the Phil, uh, the Filipino Com- Communist Party. They're they're an interesting you're bunch. Blowing let's say someone let's. up with landmines, you're not just putting down one. No, you're landmining an area that you know that they're going to go through, mm-hmm. which means they're leaving fields of mines for their own fucking population to wander into. It was it was less fields and That's... more a few strategically placed, but it was still landmines in the fucking ground. Okay. Um so what happens is the Communist Party in the Philippines does what the Communist Party does and promises the great proletariat revolution and inevitably starts stepping on the proletariat's heads, right? It's in just It's an inevitability of what they do. So the late 80s and early 90s rolls around for the Philippines. Punk music. Punk music brings anarchism back into the fold in the archipelago. Oh, my God. All of a sudden, they rediscover this treasure trove of knowledge that they already had that they already possessed fucking white fu- fucking like punk music is being yeah. brought in they're like did you hear about this great idea anarchism and you explain it to them and they're like looking at their own historical timeline they're going actually and so they read so now you have the rise of the badass acapella punks they started getting Not to be confused shit. with acapella punks those are very different <laughs> They started getting shit done. And this gives rise to the likes of Bazu Mali and all of his contemporaries. Anarcho activists operating with explicit, uh, like, archipelago based indigenous knowledge that has been run through the filter of the Spanish uh, uh, propaganda of the deed and expropriator era that has been been refiltered through the punk, uh, the punk angst movement and the fuck it, why can't we do it? Let's do it. Sort of mentality so what happens they start talking they start organizing mutual aid and free association network like affinity groups already exist on the islands they already have them like we already talked about right they already have these distributed communities that are highly re- uh, reliant upon each other but now because of years of colonialism and years of bullshit bullshit and bullshit right they're reliant upon a central government they're reliant upon the the externalities they're reliant upon this other right and so now mm-hmm. it's about reclaiming your pride it's about reclaiming indigenous pride it's about reclaiming our, our establishing the direct connections and the ability to just support each other so Free libraries, free health clinics, free sports programs, all these sorts of anarchist operating modalities, free housing, free, they start doing it. They start, they like, you know what? Baz, Baz and his contemporaries take the fucking ball and they run with it. And they, they use the language of modern anarchism, but they, when speaking to like tribal elders, when speaking to the elders of the indigenous communities, they also can speak their language and they're saying, yes, like, look, this is a new idea for much of the planet. But for us, it's always been that way. Ignore these communists, ignore these capitalists. We're here to tell you yeah. what you were doing was already the future. And Boz excelled at um, integrating some of the newer anarchistic um, elements like social ecology from Bookchin and re-rolling it and repackaging it uh, so that the sort of more organizational elements and the more like activist elements could align with what already existed within the indigenous cultures. And so it just clicked. It just clicked on like conversation one. There was no there was nothing necessary for him to convince. It was just, hey, you know what? There's really good ideas that exist and we could do them. And they're like, yeah, we could, couldn't we? Yeah, so let's do them. And they do them. Beautiful. It is, the archipelago is one of the most, like, prime examples of how anarchism just clicks. If if there's, like, the precursors already existing in the social fabric. Yeah, it, it just happens, and they're they're highly effective. They they're astounding organizers, and they get shit done. Um, 
So would towns have a piggy bank where they spend on things like the town, but seemingly the people have no need for carrying money? It That all depends. Dude, Karina, there's no way for me to say that because yes, no, maybe so. The archipelago is such a distributed um, fabric. There, there, there's There's... Some that do, some that don't, some that would uh, that would eschew money entirely. Um, so it, it it's it's painting with a broad brush, a group that basically defies painting with a broad brush. Um, I know that uh, anarchist economics can get very complicated if uh, what arose, um, like the several different monetary systems that arose in Catalonia. Um, would indicate i'm guessing it's like lots of people running with different ideas in different directions <laughs> yeah once you get large enough um it, it just depends on how you you plan your interactions thereof and that was just i mean because they were in a spin they were in a civil war so it was you know planning was it, it was more of a scramble than a plan um but uh, as i point out to people and I'm backed up by, you know, I mean, people hate him. Love him or hate him. Fucking Noam Chomsky has been studying the Spanish Civil War since he was age 12. It's the time he wrote his first essay on the Spanish Civil War. He's been obsessed with it ever since. Um, 50% of agriculture yeah. and industry was produced by quite anarchist like communes. Uh, so Just put a red hat on him and it would be perfect. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, 50% of all agriculture and industry production during the Civil War was being done by, anarcho -com uh, by anarchistic communes. So, yep. like, that's, I mean, clearly... So, and that was what percentage again? 50. Literally half. Half of, half of all agriculture and industry during the active years of the Spanish Civil War was being produced by anarchistic communes. That's, it does, that's kind of, those are results. Like that's, that's fucking mm -hmm. results. Um, so yeah, like, and the, the, the archipelago is proving like a certain level of resilience, at least within the indigenous societies. I can't speak to the outsiders. Some of them fucking get with the program and participate, but the indigenous communities within the archipelago are some of the most anarchistic motherfuckers walking the planet right now. Like they, they get it. They, they get it at a theory level. They get it at a praxis level. They get it at a direct action level. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I know that there's some... So uh, switching topics slightly, um, I know that there's somewhat of a, um, <clears throat> uh, a mixed model and fuck knows how they're doing now, but um, uh, Rojava. Oh, yeah. They're not doing well. Let's thought? just put it that way. Uh, Rojava yeah. was, um, it's a good idea. It's a good idea, but it's, it's, it's an area born of conflict. And yeah. so they have, they have a battle on a thousand fronts and they're, it's difficult. I, I think, I think the only thing, God, how many, do I want to bite that bullet? I think I'm going to bite that bullet. I don't think it's. I don't think it's destined long for this world. I don't think it's going to have um, yeah. a long run, uh, given the other socioeconomic and geopolitical factors of the region, especially taking into account militarization. Um, I don't think that they're going to survive long term, but. I, uh, I Turkey hope I'm wants wrong. very strongly to exterminate them and the yeah. stuff holding Turkey back has left. Yeah, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I will be. Um, and um, I also don't think they're the best model for anarchism. I think they, Fair enough. Yeah, I, I think that they utilized a variety of anarchistic tenants and that's fine. Like that's, I don't think, I think that the, the um, best I, I, future. I didn't see them as anarchism, anarchism per se. And yeah. look, I can't say definitively that I am an anarchist. I don't know if, or like, I know that I am libertarian left, but I don't know what configuration of ideas I think would work best. I... I, as an anarchist, just pure, straight anarchist, I see me holding the, the dandelion-like seeded flower of anarchism and just... 
I can concentrate all of those ideas in a singular location, but I think the best thing for anarchism is to spread that, to create a diaspora, to treat it as a tool belt of tools and to start handing the tools out to people who need them. You may not need a hammer, but you may need a screwdriver. Here's the screwdriver, right? Yeah. You, I, I think that's the best future for anarchists and anarchism specifically, that we understand it as a lens of analysis in a tool belt. And that way, if we teach people how to view the world using a, an, 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 an anarchistic lens of analysis, and then we teach them, the, give them the tools that anarchists use, then they can use to, choose to apply them as necessary in their day-to-days. I, I th- makes sense as an approach. I, I yeah, I, I think that that's probably the best because if you can get everybody doing something slightly anarchistic, then you can get everybody doing slightly more anarchism. Right? Like it, it's the first step that's the hardest. Right? Like it's oh, I'm not an anarchist. You're right, you're not. But do you understand that what you're doing here is anarchistic? Right? Like that is. Yeah. what the anarchists are about. That's what they talk Here about. Here is a modality that I am teaching you how to use. Yeah. Um, and so um, that, that's that's my hope and my that's my sort of method as an anarchist and as you know an educator in my own right on the topic is like don't don't try and go for the whole thing and it's it's born of a highly <laughs> highly problematic individual combined with my own Thesusian oh. methodology that. Hi. Like, Sorry, just a moment. I just realized that there are currently 69 viewers. Oh. Nice. Uh, Please continue. Ah, nice. Um, the, like, yeah, uh, uh, Hakeem Bay. I fucking, look, I'll, uh, asterisk Hakeem's name. It needs asterisk. Fucking dude was a fucking pedophile and a half. Um, but um, the idea of a TAS, uh, a temporary autonomous zone, rather than an actual anarchistic area right and trying to hold on to it like catalonia or like machnoist ukraine that sort of thing you will be constantly inundated by authoritarian power structures and that sort of thing they will want you gone you are poisoned to their entire system and so if you can create these sort of temporary autonomous zones which is what bay discussed amongst other things <clears throat> you um you can teach people how mm. to operate this way and then shut it down right it doesn't have to exist for a thousand years it doesn't have to be the grand empire i just need you to understand how this works i need you to understand a non-hierarchical method of operating i need you to understand that there are ways to coordinate hierarchically and include everybody such as consensus decision making rather than just majority vote right there's ways to do this stuff and there's tools that i can give you but if you've never seen it if you've never experienced it you're not going to understand it there's, you know, I mean, the vast majority of people are learners by doing, right? There's few of us that can read some theory and comprehend it and it clicks. Most people need to get their hands on it. They need to do it. They need to experience it. So you mix that in with somebody like Michel Luc Bellemare, who I is responsible for a huge portion, even though he's a dirty, dirty communist on top of it. He's an ANCOM. Um, I adore the man. And he influenced greatly my sort of praxis methodology of teaching people micro revolutions yeah. that like you y'all out there talking about the fucking revolution and these fuckers haven't ever experienced it. You can't be teaching people how to conduct a revolution when they've never even witnessed a revolution in their life. You have to start with micro fascism, micro authoritarianism and micro revolutions in their everyday world, uh-huh. in their everyday life. And then you can build up from there, right? The, 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 the authoritarian professor at university who you can slightly undermine and conduct a micro revolution amongst your class and coordinate the, the grading structure and screw this guy or your boss at work or even in your family, your, your paternalistic fucking, you know, uh, toxic masculinity father that you can, you know, undermine and empower your sisters or your mother, that sort of thing. You have to teach people how to conduct these micro revolutions. So when the time comes, they actually have experience. That's a really interesting idea and a very 
very compelling set of examples. I, it's that's so yeah. I've like Bay synthesized with fucking uh, Bella Mare synthesized with a little of my compartmentalized Tsuzian methodology sort of leads me to that like dandelion flower seedling sort of thought process on anarchism at least is because we are different than most ideologies. Anarchism is different than most of the ideologies that you'll come across because of this lens of analysis and this toolkit we have. It's what it is. In the words of Emma Goldman, there is no monolithic philosophy. Anarchism isn't a monolithic philosophy. It's a network of ideas, and we much prefer it that way. And when you wrap your head around that and you start operating as a propagandist, as I do, then it requires a shift of tactic that like, yeah, I don't necessarily want like, you know, Mexico to be anarchist. That would be counterproductive because the U S is going to slam them. You would like lots of people who are familiar with anarchist methodologies in Mexico. Yes. People who are familiar with anarchist methodologies can use those methodologies to usurp power in small and useful ways to make people's lives a little bit better and a little bit easier and can perform the the coordination necessarily necessary to take care of more people yes because uh ambrosia michelle luke bellamare m-i-c-h-e-l space l-u-c space b-e-l-l-a-m-a-r-e michelle luke bellamare um he's a phd theorist and uh, good luck reading him. I adore the man. He is intentionally obtuse and um, very opaque in his writing um, because he does not believe his writing is for the every every person. He, he literally is walling it behind highly contrived speech patterns. Um, and yes, 100% that what you said, yes. Um, in the, does he use academia babble? He does, uh, of his own creation. Ooh, that's some of the funnest. Um, yeah, it, it is, he, he creates his own, I've, I have sent him DMs before on, on fucking Twitter. I need you to, exp- what do you mean by this term, please, sir? <laughs> please, professor? What, what do you mean? Because there's no way to reference this. And contextually, it makes no sense. I've, I've sent him DMs before. Um, and it's, it's absolutely insane sometimes. Uh, you want to start, uh, Ambrosio, you want to start with the structural anarchism manifesto? It looks like this. This is literally a thesis. This is literally a thesis. That's, this, what this is. This is an academic paper. This is a thesis. Um, but this is where you want to start. Um, I, you know, yeah, I, I, there, there's this thing, um, Marx once said, um, that it, he doesn't write recipes for the cook shops of the future. And then he went on to write recipes for the cook shops of the future. Right? Like that's exactly yeah. what he, he, he did. The anarchists have a similar turn of phrase, but we actually mean it when we say it, there is no project of projects, right? Like I tell people this all the time that if I, truly get you the tools and I convey the information and I convince you and you're like, yes, these are the, these are the tools that I've been looking for my entire life. What should I do with them, Kai? I have no answer for you. Anarchism isn't prescriptive. That's not how anarchism works. If I put it, if I teach a hundred people to be anarchists and I put them in a fucking room together and then walk out, it doesn't matter what my opinion is. It doesn't matter what my philosophies are. It doesn't matter my ideology. It doesn't, none of that matters. What matters is those hundred individuals that have autonomy have now. Have the tool sets to work together. They can build what they want to build, which goes on to speak to your point about, you know, I don't want Mexico to be anarchist. I want all of the people of Mexico to have anarchistic tools at their disposal. So when the time comes and that tool is the tool that's the job requires, it calls for, they can just whip it out of their fucking tool belt and use it. Yep. <laughs> cave. Hey there, no, cave. Totally get it. Uh, and yeah, the project of projects is making a sandwich for a homeless person. That's, uh, that's when, when we have the existentials, because that happens from time to time. I get like uh, lefties in, in the midst of their existential crisis. 
Right. And then it's just like, how can you fucking, you know, neoliberal hyper capitalism is so overwhelming. I mean, let's face it, you know, we've all been there at the midst of the existential crisis. Like, holy shit, look at it. The problem is huge and it may be insolvable. Right. Um, I always tell them to just go make a fucking sandwich. That's 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 my channel go to is just go make a fucking sandwich. Right. Like, don't worry about the stuff I'm worried about. Don't yeah. don't do what I'm doing. That's that's not what you need to take away from this. What you need to take away with from this is that there was probably a dude you walked past on your way home from the store that you could have helped. Help help that person. Just do it. You you can't fix the system. You can't alleviate the entirety of the system suffering for that person. That's not within your capability. But in that moment, which is all we have, there is no past, there is no future, there is but the present. In that moment, that person you could identify a need that you could alleviate, do it. That's the heart of anarchism. That's the beating heart of anarchism. Is a good heart to have. Recognize coercion and oppression where it exists. Recognize those that you can help and do something about it. And Sometimes that edict um, <clears throat> leads to some interesting actions on the parts of anarchists. I'm looking at the fucking expropriators and propagandists of the deed. Um, but we try not to talk too much about them because Twitch TOS fucking... <laughs> it can bite us in the ass on those crews. <laughs> but Spanish... Just waggle our fingers. Spanish, Italian, Chilean, and Argentinian anarchists um, have gotten up to some shit in their years. And it is, um, yeah. Oh, oh, wait. I know how to say this name, but I don't know how to say this name. Oh, this is, this is like Irish or Gaelic or something. Starlight, thank you for the follow. Fucking somebody give me the phonetics on that one. Siobhan, thank you, Alex. I'm like, I know this name, but I, I can remember it's Siobhan. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I, it, it's, we, you know, it's crazy, right? I actually believe the shit I say. It's, it's wacky as fuck, man. <laughs> oh. Uh, I, I try to say what I believe, but I don't have as much of a, um, a, a mind for academic inquiry as you do. Um, I, I, I get my ADD jumping in. There's sometimes that I can, you know, find something that's, you know, presents the th the theory and idea as well in like an audio form that I can consume more easily. Um, but so many of the, like, all forms of leftist theory audio books out there yes. are just so fucking dull. Like they're a great sleeping pill, but they they need better narrators. Um, and if I thank you to the like to the people who did put their voices out there so that the the text could exist and be used by people, thank you. But <laughs> I'm sorry, you, you put me to sleep. Um, I no guarantees, but I do make smarmy remarks, and my my inflections are a little all over the place. If you ever need uh, material for taking down right wing libertarian slash so called ancaps. Um, I've got a like 12 hour series on YouTube for a playlist that is me fucking going at it, dissecting the, I, I've seen some of those segments being recorded and they were a joy live. Well then, yeah, the, the, it's the playlist is complete. It's up. Um, so if you, you ever need the material, <laughs> you're just like yeah, fucking goddamn right wing libertarians. <laughs> yep. And thank you for the compliment, by the way. Um, Rules for radicals on two times speed is okay. Um, yeah, fuck, I, I swear by that book. I, I, I'm, I'm one part anarchist, one part fucking Alinsky. Like, so rules for radicals, you say? Yes, Saul Alinsky. Every, every. I don't care if you're. It's not just for leftists. I don't care who you are. If you're politically engaged and you're, you're wanting to like make change in the world, why haven't you? committed rules for radicals to the to your memory like this is a dude that has a track record that's insane uh, like hillary clinton and barack obama both credit Saul Alinsky with teaching them how to organize how to run a community the catholic diocese of chicago used to send graduates to Saul Alinsky to teach him how to com how to do community organizing 
it, when when hmm. one when one possible president and one actual president of the United States and then the Catholic fucking church are like, yeah, yep. this dude's the best community organizer we know. How much of a fucking resume do you need? <laughs> the cool. I'll, I'll give it a look. It's it's definitely worth worth More looking accurately through. Accurately listen, but yes. Yeah. Uh, our centrist welcome here too. Centrists are welcome. Uh, you may take a bit of a beating, um, but you're you're most assuredly welcome. You will probably be asked a lot of questions now. The fact that you volunteered, you're a centrist, but you're you're more than welcome from my standpoint. Um, yeah, rules for radicals is just required reading. I I like it. Just is. I've been hammering. It was Viva that had the most hilarious response. I I hammer this fairly regularly. Like it's just required reading. And Viva comes into like the commons on Discord one day and goes, I just read Rules for Radicals. Like, holy shit, now I know what Kai's talking about. Like, yeah. It it's it, it's Blended. fundamental to understanding how to organize like do community organization. And if you're gonna do like mutual aid work and stuff like that, it's really important. And he was so good at it. <laughs> so definitely recommend. Um, and I don't know if you're in the market for like more, Oh, see, that's the thing. You got the ADHD sort of thing and the audio book thing. I yeah. The look into, yeah, God, I need to just record more theory. <laughs> I just need to record more theory. Um, if you decide to, I would not complain. Oh God. I've got some Bob Black stuff up on the, cha uh, on the YouTube channel now too. If you want to know more about like anti-work and what it actually is yep. about rather than just the Reddit meme. Um, there's the theory playlist and it's got, I think four chapters Ooh. of Bob Black so far and more coming one yeah, of these that days. That sounds worth giving a listen to. Yeah. His, his essay on, um, you know, abolish work is fundamental. Like it, it's, it, yeah, like it, it's something I wish everybody in that stupid subreddit had actually read. <clears throat> I Zippy, I saw that comment. I saw yeah. the question. I don't know. I will give it some consideration, Zippy. Um, uh, so, Kai, I should be getting my rumble on. Thank you so much for for having me on for a a, a chat and thank you for yeah, chatting, uh, giving me the opportunity to learn some, a bit about some cool anarchist history. It was really lovely. Um, um, somebody, I go, some, somebody, at least you'll be able to see this. Oh. This is the little. One that I've been painting. Let's if you see. Look in your Discord. Yep. Hang on. I I can make it. So do you do you mind? No, not at all. All right. Well, here you go. God damn it! You're fucking good at that, man. Thanks. I've been practicing a lot since I started doing it on stream. Jesus fucking Christ! You're good at that, dude. That's yeah. That's gorgeous. Uh, so I've started painting up a bunch of goblins. Uh, they're being named and having the robe colors chosen by subscribers. It's a cute way of doing sub babies. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I, I got, I got a little, little, the, uh, the shake on me. I've always been a little, a little shaky on my hands and I just don't have the artistic eye for it. It's, did you get uh, Miniatures are easy. It's like a, a three dimensional coloring book. You just got to learn where to put the paint. Oh, I sucked at coloring books. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm, I'm not good at keeping it in the lines, my man. I'm not good at keeping it in the lines. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to see something a little bit disgusting that's not finished? It is Twitch safe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By all means. Hold on. This here. Oh, it's because of the, uh, what's the thing? The fucking stupid tripophilia or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, this is the, the Cthulhu I've been working on. The gradient on the, the tentacles is very well executed. Thank you. That's, yeah, that was the first thing that popped out. I was like, Jesus Christ, he got that gradient done really well. I'd be like, there'd be hard lines and that. shit. I was painting that one for my regular streams for a bit, but um, uh, it was getting to the point with the, the suckers that I was having a few people per stream mentioning trypophobia, and I'm like... Okay, I'll, I'll move that one over to the. Ah, yes, yeah, so I went philia rather than phobia. That's right. I fucking just. It, yeah. I was like, oh wait, I went philia rather than phobia. I, I Wrong direction. <laughs> oh, no, you're you're. I mean, dude, you're really fucking good at that shit. 
Yeah, it's a hobby. It brings me joy. It's, um, <laughs> look, if I'm going to give a parting meme, um, it's the, uh, this is just something that I advocate for um, progressives and leftists. Find hobbies that you enjoy doing and do them to bring you happiness and, if possible, to bring happiness to the people around you. We live in fucking stressful times where mental health um, services can be very difficult for people to access. Um, so finding hobbies, just things that you can do because you enjoy doing them and that you can slowly get a little bit better at over time can be like really nice and grounding. So this, uh, yeah, quick question something you benefit from grab mm-hmm. yourself a hobby. Mental health yeah? services. What are those? Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Americans. I'm <laughs> yeah, so sorry. yeah. We're dude, we're fucked. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> we get like 12 government psychiatry sessions a year. They're difficult to access and a lot of psychs are completely fucking booked out. That's, that's um, first thing that popped in my head was that's 13 more than we get. <laughs> yep. Jesus. Right. We're in the negative over here. It's, uh, it's bad, man. It's bad. It's, it's the only thing we can do is laugh or cry. So you might as well fucking laugh, right? Mm. Oh, man. One's for the outside, one's for the inside. Yep. Oh, gallows humor saves my life, man. Either way, uh, thanks. Thanks for stopping by, man. It's Thank been a wonderful conversation. Along. Have yourself a good one. Uh, I, I will attempt to. Good luck to the yep future. Yeah, you guys are always in the future over there. Uh, yes. Uh, Australia is weirdly at the cutting edge of time. <laughs> Just behind New Zealand, though. Uh, as is tradition. Um, fuck, uh, Alex, shout him out one more time. Everybody, real Radham. Fuck, yeah, I don't even know how to describe Radham. Fucking, he does stuff. He talks about stuff. He's a, he's a wonderful human being. Just go experience him, and you might see some mini Maybe painting push. along the yeah. way. Um, oh, and 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 he knows I can say this. I, he's I'm run off. He, he has said he has said this is okay for me to say because he understands what I mean. He's absolute carny trash, and I love him. Oh, uh, fuck yeah. No, uh, that is very understandable. <laughs> fuck it. It's rare, it's rare I get to actually talk to that, that anymore these days. Uh, anyway, Rad, have a good rest yeah. of your day. You too. Have yourself a beautiful rest of your stream. And thank you for taking care of the, the chat that I brought in here. I hope oh. that they've been well behaved. Uh, they they, they absolutely the have. Of course they've been well behaved. They're your chat. They're not like the, the randos that walk in and they're like, gamer word, gamer word, gamer word, Trump. <laughs> yeah. Oh, either way, man. Have a That's good for now. Have Night, a good Kai. One. Night. Night, chat. Oh, everyone, real rad, huh? Um, it's particularly odd setting I'm writing with some people. Oh, uh, Siobhan, that's right. You, um, <laughs> Radom is a wonderful person who presumably smells like cabbage. Uh, <laughs> uh, you were, let's see. Let me get some music. Uh, no, uh, uh, I did not. Um, fucking okay. gamer word of the day is anti aliasing. Oh, let's see. Uh, based on roadside picnics, some aliens dropped a bunch of physics-altering artifacts on the planet in 61, and things got re- wild real fast. Uh, Siobhan, I'm always interested in reading some interesting, like, fiction. Um, let's see. Lexi, 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 Lexi. Uh, speaking of enjoyment, would you ever get involved in debates? Oh, God, no. Um, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, that would bring out the worst in me. For for my own good. Oh, uh, Tinderios, uh, Tinder, Tinderios. Thank you for the follow, and Ambrosio. Thank you for the follow as well. Um, no, that would bring out the worst in me. I get hyper competitive. I don't know how to play for funsies, and I'm very well schooled in like speech and debate, mock trial, constitutional issues, contemporary issue debate. Um, I took all of those and did all of those. I'm pretty fucking good at it. And I don't mind like undermining my own position to undermine your position because I want to win. And as somebody who's legitimately advocating for a, a position that's contained within an ethical framework that I value, I would prefer not to engage in a space or a activity that would potentially put me in a position where I would knowingly 
participate in that sort of endeavor because I would, I, I would, I wouldn't be able to stop myself because reasons. So yeah, no, I, 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 it's best for me. It's best for the community. It's best for my sanity. If I were not to engage in those sorts of things, I don't mind, um, <laughs> Fair enough, Viva. No, I can fling the shit too, Viva. That's that's the problem. Um, fucking, I I wouldn't mind having conversations with some of these people on my air in a controlled space, right? Like that's that I don't mind. Um, but I would never. I, I'm not doing it. I won't. I won't say never because never say never. Never say always. Um, but I, I panels are terrible. Panels are just awful. Um, but I don't, um, I, <laughs> Viva, you've never seen my performances. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm more interested in one-on-one -on -one conversations because panels have an interesting multi-person dynamic that like somebody will like s square up here says some shit, right? And then... I want to talk to them about it, but now I have to contend with person over here and person over here and that sort of thing. And it's not like, I, I, I much prefer a two person dialectic, right? I, 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 I prefer a dialectic rather than, than a panel. I find it at least productive for myself. I find it enjoyable for myself. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not interested in those sorts of things. Now, if, anybody wanted me to like have a conversation with a person in particular i'm open to those i've had conversation with psychopaths fucking but <clears throat> um yeah i'm not i'm not looking to yeah six is way too many yeah six is already way too many dude alex i'm willing to have a conversation with one person that's that's it right like if you wanted to host it and you wanted me to have a conversation with a person, that's that's fine. But I'm not, I'm fucking, yeah. Do I have the durability to listen to Haz saying cope for 45 minutes? I would laugh my ass off. Dude, you know what? If, Kat, if Haz wants to come on my air and yell cope for 45 minutes, at this point, no, I'm for it. I'm for it. Dude, we will just fucking <laughs> the whole time laughing. What, are you kidding me? 45 fucking minutes of him yelling cope and then just 45 fucking minutes of has running around the fucking screen. Yeah. Yeah. Infrared. Yeah. Uh, Siobhan. Yeah. We fucking dude has came up like, trust me, knew what we knew has when he was a, like a, a fucking five viewer Andy. Yeah. Yeah. We fucking, there he is. That's this pocket has cute little pocket has. Um, not so secret now, Alex. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I gotta do it. Fuck it. It'd be hilarious. Cause I don't take has seriously anymore. I, I finally got over that, fu uh, that, uh, that hurdle that like, he's just a fucking meme to me. He's not a serious intellectual. He's not a serious uh, individual to interact with. He just says crazy shit. That's, that's all he is. Oh, whoa, Zippy. Oh, that is good. Zippy. Uh, so that's the color Zippy chose. Well, I chose technically, but Zippy interpreted and chose. And you know what? Fucking A, Zippy, that is spot on. It's got that twinge of purple and the glimmer that, dude, you nailed that fucking Zippy. You fucking nailed that. Uh, good on you. Um... Shoplift is pretty good. Just watch the blueberry, the boobies. Um, yeah, well, I yell at ANCAPs. I have no problem just yelling at ANCAPs. Um, I need to uh, get Alicia on your air the next time she's in and point out how she's wrong on black separatism. She uses full on black fucking hammer, uh, black hammer talking points. Oh. Uh, first exposure I had, uh, some can, uh, cans, UK, uh, Kenzuck, uh, Kenzuck guy. Um, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. We've uh, we've we've known Has since he started. Like that's the community. Myself, fucking. We've we've known Has since he started. Um, and so, yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. Um, fucking. I remember him when he was just itty bitty, and now he's fucking like thirteen hundred subs or some shit like that. But it's because he says crazy shit. It's like a car wreck. Nobody takes him seriously. Like, I mean, a few people do. And those few people are fucking insane beyond belief. But, yeah. Like, nobody takes Haz fuck seriously. He says crazy shit for attention. That's that's his shtick. He says crazy shit for attention. He says shit like, um... It, he, he believes in abiotic oil theory and crazy shit like that. It's absolutely absurd. Yeah, he's like an epic fail compilation IRL. That's true. Um... Fucking, yeah, um, and of course, two holes. He'll never live that down. Never. Never. That's the two holes thing. I will never let him live that down. <laughs> that fucker, he didn't know. He didn't, he didn't know. He didn't know. Man, it was bad. Um, oh, it's the two hole guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's has. Has slash infrared slash tanky crazy motherfucker that's has he's the two hole guy oh god he is special oh well i mean dude I, alex the fact of the matter is is that somebody who's spouting black hammer talking points may already be lost i mean i'll talk to her i'll talk to her but i gotta tell you i don't have a great rep uh, a great track record with converting or deratting um like black nationalists black separatists because I'm white. I'm white. There's no... I'm the devil. Right? Like, there's nothing I can say that, that penetrates that field usually. So, I mean, I'll try. But, like, you know. <laughs> is what it is. She's white? Oh, for fuck's sake. She's a white black separatist. Is she racist as fuck? Like... That's some racist ass shit. That's some racist ass shit. A white black separatist? That's some racist ass shit. <laughs> Dude, that's just racism with extra steps. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. She's a white black separatist. Oh my god. That's just racism with extra steps. That's amazing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, it would be really best if y'all just leave. Oh, excuse me? <laughs> oh, man. That's amazing. Oh, that's special. Oh, that's special. Uh, how we get the commune going? Zippy and I are going to paint your nails. <laughs> I want to paint little flags and A's on them. Good luck. Uh, fuck you. Yeah, just smile and nod at him. I know, right? Dude, that's some clown shit. That's some fucking clown ass shit. Holy shit, that's some clown ass shit. Holy fuck. A white black separatist. Dude, that's some deep racism. Oh. <laughs> I had to clip it. Yeah. Wait, let's. Hold on. Racist ass shit. That's some racist ass shit. Racist ass shit. All right, hang on, hang on. Fuck it, I'll, I'll throw it on the air. I just popped it out with that, though. That's some racist-ass shit! A white black separatist? That's some racist-ass shit! <laughs> She's white? Dude, that's just racism with extra steps! <laughs> what the fuck? 
It was an honest reaction. It was an honest reaction. Oh, holy shit. I, I, a white, a, a white black separatist. Oh yeah, I guarantee she thinks she's fucking, yeah, Crimson. She's way too deep. She's in, she's in way too deep. There's no way she realizes she's just a racist bitch. Like there's no fucking way she realizes that she's just racist. Like that's, dude, that's, dude, that's, that's some, in, dude, that's, She's a black separatist who's white. <laughs> How the fuck? I, not on the weekends, Alex. The weekends are mine. I don't fucking work the weekends. <clears throat> yeah. Dude, that's some 42069 69 IQ racism. Jesus fucking Christ. That's some insane shit. Wow. I want to know how she thinks she's an anarchist, too. I mean, that's secondary. Dude, the anarchism thing is in the back fucking... That's on the back burner now. Dude, you're a fucking white girl who thinks fucking... Who thinks black separatism is the answer? Like, that's some racist-ass shit. Yeah, trees, you know, trees. Yeah, exa clearly. Yeah, exactly. On the other hand, it could be the most genius racist of them all. No, 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 leftist. You understand me wrong. I'm for the black people. I know, right? Some 40 chess QAnon shit. It is. It is. Siobhan, it is. Yeah. That, that's, dude, that. God damn, that's amazing. That's amazing. Fucking white girl who claims to be an anarchist advocating for black separatism. Bitch, this is some racism with extra steps. What the fuck are you doing? Sit your fucking pansy pale ass down and shut the fuck up. Holy fuck, man. What the fuck are you running your, your mouth about? God damn. Fucking my, my old partner comes out when I hear that shit. Sorry. I'm fucking old partner. That's just, that's my old partner. 100%. I'm just channeling him at that point. Fucking A. Um, yeah, there's like people saying Jews should have their own homeland in Israel. The Jews belong on their own land, so get out of mine. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, God. Yeah, good luck with that panel. Alex, good luck with that panel. That panel is going to go great. I'm sure the white girl who's who wants to, the the supposed anarchist white girl who wants black separatism will have a very based take on nuclear uh, nuclear energy. I'm sure that's going to be a great fucking panel. Just tell her that the black people get their own nuclear power plant. She'll be for it. That's, that's the way around that. That's how you end run that. It's like, well, actually, what I'm, I'm what I'm saying is that the indigenous uh, communities, as well as the black separatist communities, should be able to get their own uh, nuclear power plants as well. That way, they have independent power uh, power grid and power structure separate from that uh, the the society as a whole. Should be all for it. Should be all for it. To instantly, should be like bad nuclear power, good nuclear power. Hundred percent. Those type of people fucking are easy to pivot. She won't be on the panel tomorrow, thankfully. Oh, f okay. Uh, I know it was funny. A uh, nerdy other politician eating Pokemon instead of spamming. Oh, wait, uh, instead I was spamming. I'm done. Oh, jeez. Um, how about nukes? Oh yeah, that's definitely an ANCAP talking point. Fucking everybody gets a nuke. Personal nukes. Um, if, wait, Siobhan, if that's what it takes to sell nuclear energy to people, Siobhan gets the Machiavellianism. Siobhan gets it. Welcome, Siobhan. You you get it. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta make an argument. Fucking get them on team. Fuck it. There's, we're fighting, as anarchists especially, you realize we're fighting like a billion fronts, right? Like battles on a billion fronts. Occasionally, you just gotta fucking strange bedfellows that shit. Like today I'm agreeing with these nut jobs. Oh, don't worry. Tomorrow I'll be undermining their entirety of their position, but we're gonna win today. Right? Like, it's that sort of mentality. Like, you know, yeah. You look out over the battlefield and you, you're like, holy shit, are we fighting on the same side? Yeah, we are. For this moment. Don't get, get fucking near me. Don't think we're allies. Don't think we're friends. But we are going to take this motherfucker out together. And as soon as this battle is over, coming for you. Right? 
I don't know who CTV is. Um, I mean, I definitely know who fucking the punching bag of the panel circuit is. Fucking that dummy. He doesn't even realize that they, like half the time he's getting made fun of. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad more than anything else. Ugh. Now that I think about it. Critically thinking veteran. Don't know anything about him. Never interacted with him. Um... Oh yeah, I want to ask you what oh, what do you think of convincing people to go for the right solution for the wrong reason? Yeah, I'm fine with it, Viva. 100 percent fine with it. 100 percent fine with it. Yeah, I don't I don't give a shit. If if it's the ethically correct position, if it's the the, the end goal works and is the ethically correct position that will help and is humane, yeah, I don't give a shit how you get them there. As long as it isn't like inherently oppressive or authoritarian or, you know, utilizes the coercive tactics of the system, that sort of thing. But if you can like end run them into it, yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, it's a hell of a lot of that. I've gotten more uh, than a few Trump a few Trump people thinking I'm their buddy because I don't like the Democratic Party. <laughs> uh, Siobhan gets it. Yeah, Siobhan gets it. Fucking, we, dude, we get that all the time, Siobhan. They wander in here. I broke a dude's brain fucking last week. Last week. Um, because I um, he couldn't read me as liberal or conservative. He's like, what? What? Broke the fucking dude's brain. I'm like, yeah, it's more than just the binary. It's crazy. Uh, che. Oh, fuck. Che, good luck. I mean, fucking all that bullshit. Fucking wage slavery, blah, blah, blah. But, um, Che, I hope it goes well. Much luck, my man. <clears throat> I saw CTV raid surfs and Lance reflexively told people to go follow him back. It was kind of funny. Uh, one with the shades and the American flag and the wolf pack lingo. I, again, I've, I've never... I don't know it. You could describe CTV to me to the nth degree. I don't. I've never interacted with him. Don't know. Yeah, I'm fine with that, Viva. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fucking whatever. If, if it supports a labor movement, if it supports human rights, if it supports, like, you know, getting health care for the fucking populace, whatever. Yeah, make the argument you need to make to get dummy on side. Hillary Clinton doesn't want universal health care. What? Yeah, yeah, she specifically said only, only fucking liberals would, just whatever you gotta do, whatever you gotta do. Fucking, you know, that'd be, you know, that'd be based as shit. Hillary Clinton should weaponize that. Why the fuck hasn't this, why the fuck hasn't she weaponized that? You fucking dumb establishment status quo twat. Holy fuck. If she was actually working for the people, she would have weaponized that already. Fucking Hillary Clinton should come out and say, everybody should vote for Donald Trump. Everybody should be against single payer health care. Everybody should be, like, she should just come out fucking, everybody should be, whatever the fucking position, she knows how they, because she's a twat, yeah, I know, right? Uh, what's up, mister? Anyway, oh, good, good job, enjoy that. <clears throat> fucking, yeah, like, that's how you know she's not on team. She would've fucking, oh, God. Yeah, America, you could unite behind, uh, could unite behind any cause for their distaste of her. Yeah, 100%, like, if she was actually on team, which she's not, she's a fucking classist elitist, absolute cunt. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, no. Hillary Clinton's just a horrible, horrible human being. Um, fucking, you know, yeah. Either way. <laughs> what time is it? Yo, oh yeah, definitely then. Oh, well, that needs to reload. Eh. Oh, what do I have here? Uh, this is, oh wait, hang on. Ah, oh, there we go. Fucking load, load, load. Okay. Oh, 100%. 100 fucking percent. We're doing that. Our Kansas. 
<laughs> Fuck that angry people looking bitch. Uh, um, yeah, it's been a good run. I got a lot off my chest as far as like, you know, my post left analysis of the left. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how many of y'all are going to take what I say to heart. I know some of you do. I know some of you probably just listening because I'm fucking entertaining when I yell about stuff. But I'm serious about that shit. I'm serious about getting the job done. I'm serious about meeting them where, meeting the people where we need to meet them. I'm serious about reclaiming spaces. I'm serious about not getting lost in like persnickety details. Stop fucking cha- uh, j- attempting to castigate working class vernacular. Uh, stop all that shit. Like, you, seriously, guys, we need to make progress. And you can't make it when you're busy screaming and reeing about fucking somebody's, like, choice of language. Just fucking get the job done. So. <clears throat> thank you, Caleb. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, either way, we're going to raid public. I love public. Um, public is my hangout. So, well, since Curio. Either way. Tomorrow. God, tomorrow's fucking schedule. Either way. Love you guys. Take care.